they assemble at night, each one having prepared as diligently as possible to the time given to them before the witching hour, the hour of reckoning, the time when they begin outdoor cartoon television. Stray casts is on the air. him Aaron Martins that's why we're here tonight welcome everybody I'm Pat Renwick and um tonight is a, um a night where we have fun and smile and remember our friend Aaron when he was on the show and uh these are these are good times man these are times with Aaron when Aaron was smiling and Carol and Leslie and I mean, everybody's having fun, and uh, we're so happy that Aaron's getting inducted into the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame on Thursday. It's such an honor, and we wish you were here to see it, Aaron, and we love you and miss you. And uh, Andy put this uh, best of together, best of times. That's what this is on Stray Cast with our friend Aaron Martins, and um, we hope you enjoy it, Bass Galaxy. It's going to be amazing. Hey, the important thing is, remember, anybody can attend the um, Hall of Fame uh, celebration for Aaron on Thursday night at the Wonders of Wildlife uh, in Springfield, Missouri. Um, information is available on the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame website. Uh, also, um, go to Brody of the Lake on eBay, and they're um, auctioning off all kinds of pr cool pro jerseys. All the proceeds go to the Martins family. Um, and, uh, of course, all the cool auctions on the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame website. Hey, um, kick back. Um, grab your favorite beverage or snack. And um, watch this Best of Times with Aaron Martins. And um, I hope you smile like we did. I'm Pat Renwick. Peace. See you at the uh, induction ceremony, Aaron. Love you. Hey. Wait. Hello. Hey, wait, who, who, wait a minute. Is this, is, is this the, the furious? This is Kevin, Kevin is, Van Dam. What's up, Kevin Van Dam? How you doing, man? <laughs> this is, this is the furious hog fondler. That's who this is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the champion, elite series champion at the Champlain event. Aaron Martins joins us live right now. What? What? Wait a minute. I told you I'm the Bugs Bunny of bass fishing. What's going on, dude? Aaron? <laughs> he hung up on us. <laughs> that wasn't Kevin Van Dam. That wasn't Kevin Van Are you there, Aaron? Aaron. Th there you are. We got you. Yeah. Aaron, you're back. I was there. Oh, you I, I, I have good service. I have good service and everything. I don't know what happened. Yeah, they, here we're here right now. What's going on, dude? Congratulations, man! That was outstanding win right there. That was that was an awesome win. That, that was one of my favorites ever. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I mean historic. Here's the best thing about it. Okay, <laughs> you coming back um, in 19th place, going into the last day, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think 19th, it was 19th, 19th, 19th place. And then you totally sandbag bass live. In the bass trap. That was terrible. That was terrible. I felt bad. I think I made. I think I made some people mad when I did that. I never do that. I'm usually really close to the bass trap against those. But, but the first day I had 18.8, and I thought I had 19.12, and I, I, that threw me curveballs. I couldn't believe I had. I thought I had way more than that. I, I never overestimate hardly ever, and I was shocked. So, the final day, I just kept catching these beautiful fish, and I just not the quarter pound. Uh, five ounces off each fish where I thought they were. And if I would have judged them how I thought they were, I would have had 23 pounds. Pretty funny. You could do, you could tell us you did it on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> I know Bowman and some other staff were like, why did you underestimate some guys? They kind of messed the show up, but I didn't mean to do it. It was accidental. Dude, it's bass history. Come on, that was history right there. 
You it know. was awesome. I never saw a boat all day. Never saw a lead boat. Never saw a camera boat. Never saw a cameraman. Uh, just had jet skis, uh, paddy the boat, towing tubes, uh, all all afternoon around me. That was all I had. Besides that, I was by myself. Oh my gosh, man! That's it, awesome. So to completely. You know what that means? You know what that means? You know what that means too is that very few people saw where I was fishing. I might actually be able to fish there again. <laughs> right. <'Cause> what, happens, <laughs> what happens in these tournaments is you show everybody where you're fishing, and the whole field knows where you're fishing, and you never go back there again. Yeah, it gets it gets totally molested. I don't think a lot of people realize that that's a huge because because you can only learn these lakes so well, and they're, and they're big lakes, and you, you find special spots you know, during the years you fish them. And, when you do good in tournaments, so all that spot goes. Yeah, dude. But actually, I found a nothing little spot, so it's fantastic. And then, it's all you know, yours. It's a good size area. A good size area. It wasn't really a spot. It was an area. And I just, I'm glad that not that many people went over at that. They can't say, now I'm going to go fish Aaron's spot and, and totally uh, violate it. Man. They can't. Yeah. Violate. How, how did that, how do you feel mentally, man? I know you were kind of, you were kind of feeling low, I kinda, dude. I was kind of. Yeah, I've been confident. I've been good at good attitude all all year. It just seems like nothing would ever go right this year. Um, even Raber had a chance to win or or easily make a top twelve there. Every day I lost my biggest fish on different baits. It wasn't like like a crankbait, a frog, a shock blade. I mean, it's basically you know I don't usually lose fish. I didn't lose that many fish either, but I have to lose my biggest one every day. I mean, eight pounders and stuff. It's just weird. Ooh. But um. That's how it's been going. I mean, I, I, the years I've won a EOI, I've never lose a fish. So a lot of it does come down to fish you lose as, you know, to determine how well your year turns out. Yeah, dude. And I, think my, I think my ability to land fish and hook them is better than ever, which is the weird part. So I don't know, what, I don't know, I don't know how it works, yeah. how, how stumps work, but maybe this is the end of it. Because usually it's uh, historically for me every – about every seven or so years, I, I have a couple bad ones. It's the seven-year itch. My third, yeah. Just blame the universe. Third, third one in my career. So, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's over. Yeah, it is over, and you're going to a place that's very. <laughs> it is over, Aaron. We know uh, that. And, and there, there's. I love I love I love Saint Clair, so dude. Like, it's, you're it going. Might my, it might be my favorite. It, I don't know. It might be my favorite one. I mean that that holds a special place in your heart, dude. That's a fun one. I, I love Champlain, though. I really do. That's a fantastic place. If you're listening to have gone there, that'd, that'd be a great place to go spend like five or six days or seven days. You never get sick of it. You can go to new stuff every day and, and fish different every day. It's just a, a really neat fishery. It's definitely one of my favorites in the country. I'm super happy to actually win there. But St. Clair is the same way to me. I love St. Clair. You have Huron, you have Erie, you have that. Terrible Detroit River, which is actually good fishing, but it's an awful place to run through in a bass boat. Uh, it's a neat place too, St. Clair. Yeah, man. And I Beautiful. mean, I remember when I don't know we were there like I don't know X amount of years ago. You won the AOI there, dude. I mean, it was, it was so- yeah. And the next now the next day I had tragic, a sweet, a bitter sweet or yeah, I had to, sweet bitter. Sweet Could have won the tournament. Really sweet the day before. The next day was one of the worst days I ever had. Yeah, I, I mean. So, but dude, you're get you're you know what St. Clair does. You you, you have an understanding yeah. of the fishery, and you gotta feel yeah. really oh, good yeah. coming off of this win. And you're going to St. Clair, and you're gonna prob- you're probably gonna win that too. I have a feeling. Just keep that mounting <laughs> hardware in place. <laughs> this time you'll that's be fine. I always that's I always try every tournament to win, but that's definitely why. I yeah, feel like the chances are definitely better. You, you know who told me? The chances are higher. The the ghost of Doug Hannon told me that you're going to win this one, actually, in a dream uh, last night. So I I, I have high hopes be, for you. Be, Ghosts in your dreams? That would be fantastic. Two in a row. I've done that before. That would be great. Yeah, dude. I'd I'm, like that. And, here, and you have to promise me something, okay? You, you have to keep you, – you know that for mind, body, and soul, that the running – you're back to Aaron Martin's running at derbies, right? I mean, you got to keep that yeah. going. It's important. Yeah, I'm, I'm dedicated to running. I had a couple of days last week, I was working on tackle, and I, I got my tackle done. I just, I just went and ran with uh, what, I was, what I was fishing in that day. I just went and ran my bomb pants, bomb t-shirt, 
the shoes I've been wearing all day, this one ran, you know, a couple times ran two miles, a couple times ran three miles, just so I say I ran every, every day. I'm, because people don't understand that running it, you know, staying in a basket all day like that, and even though you're out there 12, 14 hours a day, and, uh, it feels really good when you run a lot to actually run every day. It almost recharges you the next day. You go out and you feel fantastic. You do. It, That's why I try to do it. Yeah, you really do. It, it rejuvenates your brain, dude. I mean, there's it no... It does. There's Everything. No. Body, brain, keeps your system moving, lubricated, all your joints, keeps you, uh, keeps you loose and, I guess, strong. It really does help. So you're at Six Flags? Yeah. Are you at Six Flags right now? Uh, we're down. I, we get out of there. That's a, that, that place will wear you down, too. All the rides and stuff. I think they went on almost every ride. I went on some a couple of times. There's actually really, really, really good rides there. They're almost too much. And I, I know I'm getting older now, but I used to go on rides over and over again. But couple of them, they almost make you want to pass out a little bit. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> That's an awesome feeling. You got to be careful. <laughs> you got to be careful. You can take a, a goose to the face. They're just a lot better than it used to be. And, you know, growing up, going to Six Flags, California. Magic Mountain, those, uh, those rides weren't nothing compared to what we have nowadays. You know what my problem is at Six Flags? Every time I get in line and then I get up to the end of it, I'm never tall enough to ride the, the, the rides, Aaron. Uh, the, line, the, <laughs> lines are like five, the lines are like five minutes long. Yeah, you got to be 36 Goliath inches. There was, no, there was no lines. You walked right up to the, to the train. There was, there was no lines. It was awesome. Because you, you're, you're Aaron Good Martins. Day. That's why, because you're Aaron, Aaron Martin's no, got the honorary speed no, pass. There was no, there was a hardly, hardly anybody there. It was, it was an awesome day. Appreciate it for going to the music part. That is outstanding. Hey, um, I just, I appreciate you so much calling in, dude. And we just wanted to basically congratulate you on your win on Champlain, dude, because that is so awesome, Dust. You know we're big fans, of Aaron Martin's. Yeah, right? thank you, dude. Thank it, you for doing that. I appreciate it. And what, what do you want to say to your fans before you get out of here? I uh, love you guys. Keep fishing. Enjoy. I can't believe it's this late in the season. I don't know if people feel time goes as fast as it does, but it's crazy. We're already getting close to fall. Or getting, it's almost Christmas here. It's great. Great fishing out there, and uh, our weather has actually been kind of decent, too. I know I've been up north for the last month or so, but it's been, even down in Alabama right now, it's 77 degrees by Birmingham. That's, that's time to go out fishing. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, uh, I just want to say hi to everybody and, and uh, yeah, wish me luck for St. Clair and I'll, I'll give my give my all for sure. I'm going to go out there like a hell yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm furious hog snatcher again. That, that place has got them and that, I'm not trying to figure them out. You're going to do sure. some furious hog fondling. In, on, um, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, there's no doubt about I it. And so. I'll see you out there. Let's go. I'll probably be there Saturday. You want to go for a run Saturday after the derby? Oh, definitely. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm up for that for all right, sure. All right, cool. We'll we'll go sing songs about about the past and and uh, and, and we'll we'll channel uh, inner bass galaxies together as we run. Yeah, I love I love running up there. No, it's awesome. It's perfect, and we can chase Great black weather. squirrels. They have black squirrels there. What's that? In Detroit, they have black squirrels. <laughs> no, it's a true story. It is. Yeah, they they. I don't know, like you know, by you in Alabama and us here in Indiana, we have like regular like brown or gray squirrel squirrels but when i go running in oh, michigan yeah. i thought there were skunks chasing me but they're really squirrels yeah i've seen those yeah we'll go, pretty cool look out we'll go chase them we'll chase them hey thank oh yeah i chase I, that's I, that's something i do i'm like a kind of like a dog sometimes it actually gives you a little extra burst of energy chase the squirrel and try to try to get them I, I get, do that a lot of my runs, actually. I get Gives excited. A to sprint. I do, and I get distracted. I'm like, oh, a black squirrel. And then squirrel. I cha- and then I chase squirrel. it. <laughs> squirrel. Dude. I do. I do the same thing. I say, I say, I say squirrel, just then no, I'm going to chase them. And I chase them. I've, I've gotten a few of them. I've gotten a few of them. I usually bring them home. I bring them home to my master when I, when I catch them, is what I do. <laughs> Aaron, you are awesome. Uh, thank, thank you so much, dude, for calling in. Enjoy uh, the rest of your time off, and then safe travels to, to St. Clair, and we'll see you up there, man. Thanks, thanks Dad. Awesome. God bless all you guys. You too, see buddy. You, you and your family, man. That's Aaron Martins. Thank he is you. an elite champion. He came in as a surprise here on the Straight Cast Get Outdoor. right there. <laughs> I'm here. La- there he ladies is. and gentlemen, we bring to you right now Aaron Martins. It's Aaron Martins. He's right here, right now. Hey, what's 
what's up, Pat? Hey, what's going on, what's dude? A partridge in a pear tree. Is <laughs> 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 a Brady Bunch? Fa ra 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 ra. I guess that's I guess Seth Fader is the one that is uh, the stormtrooper, right? Seth Fader. Seth Vader. Seth Fader. Yeah, he's a stormtrooper, right? Seth, that's actually Dave Brosnick from um, from the Ike Live show. What? Yeah, that's that's. Oh da- my gosh. That's Dave's alter ego. That's funny. That's a stormtrooper. <laughs> What's going on, dude? You're in California. Again, uh, you have that party tonight, right? Yeah, I'm sitting in traffic. I thought I'd be home by now, but the traffic's really bad here in LA. Oh my gosh, we left the lake about. 45 minutes ago, an hour ago. It only takes 40 minutes to get home, usually. Jeez. Wow. You're fishing? Traffic, holiday traffic. And it's 5.30 in, in Los... You know, I'm, we're in the valley, San Fernando Valley, on the 118. Awesome. Where, where, where are they we... filmed, all, filmed all the Chips movies for a chip show? Yeah. Chips. That Eric Estrada, yeah, something that else. Punch. That's where we're at. You, you would look amazing <laughs> in that... You would look amazing in that motorcycle cop outfit. You know that, right, Aaron? <laughs> Uh, both of us probably would, right? We yeah, run a lot. I think so. I th- I think it would be amazing. We should, you know, Zona just told me some big news that um that he is actually going to do a Bait Shop Two movie. Have you seen Bait Shop One? No. What is that? That was the Mark Zona's debut on the silver screen. It was Jacob Wheeler's debut. Also. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, you never saw that. I. No, I'm bad. Aaron, I don't watch TV hardly. It's okay, Aaron. It's a movie occasionally. This this is Christmas magic I, for the I'm entire. Sorry. It's Christmas magic for the entire family. So I would suggest that that you and Leslie and the kids sit down together and watch <laughs> and watch Bait Shop. <laughs> yeah, the only thing you need to know is Billy Ray Cyrus and Mark Zona. Yeah, and Tommy Sanders. And Tommy Sanders. Tommy Sanders is in it too. I don't know. I think. I think my I think my kids have had enough fishing. I. I I took my mom today, Jordan, Spencer. We all went to cast steak today, and it was cold and windy. The fishing was all right, though. Did you catch Dottie? But I don't know if watching that fishing. We, we did, did good. We went yesterday and did a lot better, though. But today was today was cold and windy, and for here, it was, like, it was 49, 49 degrees when we got off the water today. Wow. It's so cold. Did you yeah, do, it's cold for here. Did you do any good? Did you get anything? Oh, yeah. Cod. Uh, 25 or 20 or so today and like same yesterday on the wow. on the scrounger was it on the scrounger no my little most of them came on the rhino the rhino head my new shaky head the rhino head Ooh. Uh, the rhino oh head. it's a good little head nice <laughs> it's a unique it's a it's a it's a shaky head it's a shaky head it's actually different than the rest of them nice pretty cool and when when will it debut or has it it's out it's out. It's a tackle warehouse has them. I think Monster Fish and Tackle and some of the stores that this came out. The right, so right in time for it's Christmas. Still, uh, yeah, yeah, good goes good with the rubble worm. Stocking stuffers. You need to see the new Star Wars movie too, Aaron. Over the holiday. I haven't seen it. it I know I like Star Wars movies. No, you you're gonna love it. You, you're gonna you have to go see it. Really? Yeah, it, it's amazing. We we enjoyed it. It was really good. And that that um that new Jedi oh. that new Jedi chick Ray, she is super hot. You you're gonna like it. I think she run- <laughs> Yeah, she runs too. Yeah, it's it's pretty I like good. all the Star Wars movies. Hey, what's up? Hey Pat. Yeah. What what's up with the second echo like that? I don't know. Are you get you're getting a, is it like Do you a, hear that? Is it kinda like a Zeppelin song? It's like you're answering me and then and then I'm talking like a second or two later, like I'm on the moon or something. That's actually my Ro- that's my Rob that's my Robert Plant impersonation is what that is. <laughs> I think it's just on your end. I don't know. We don't know. It's it, enjoy it. Are you okay with it? I mean, can you handle it? Yeah, but it's like two seconds after I say something, I hear myself. Ah, really weird. Oh wow. Yeah, maybe your headphones are messed up. Could be your headphones in in your studio that you're talking. I'll deal. I'll I'll deal with it. Right. So everybody's doing good out there. We we are, dude. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we there's no doubt about it, man. And um, Merry so, Christmas, everybody. M- Merry you Christmas too. to you, Aaron. Hey, um, yeah. You, we wish it was 49 degrees. That'd be nice. And, and not what 20. is it? It's like 20 here in Northwest Indiana. Ooh. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. That's cold. It's absolutely it's cold. It's dumb. It's dumb, dumb stuff. So Aaron, um, you got some. You have a present for your fans. 
tonight here. Yeah. I, I, what, yep. And what, what do you want to give away? I uh, decided to give away a uh, Robo, Robo Worms. The Ned, we're going to give away a Ned package, which is a new, like a new Ned worm. It's a, uh, like a three and a quarter, three and a half inch, I think it is, and like a four inch Ned worm. So it's like a fat, like a real fat big one, like a small, like normal size one. Nice. And nice. I think we're doing like 30, 30 packs. 30 so, packs? Uh, what? 30 colors. 30 packs? Yeah, why not? Holy cow, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas! They're gonna they're gonna have to earn that, okay? That we're gonna make them earn it with yeah. the, with a trivia question here, Aaron. And I, I'm wondering even if you know the answer to this one, okay? Uh-oh. But don't answer. Yeah, don't answer if you know. Let's let's leave it for the fans here. So here they got they got to get this right. So the question is, in what year and on what lake did Aaron Martin's Fish his first Elite Series event. Now, it's a little tricky. What year and what lake was the first Elite Series event that Aaron Martins fished it. in? Now, That's but, tough. Okay. That's a tough one. But here is the, is the crucial element. They must tell us how much money that you won in that event. Damn. Yes. So it's too... It's, is it, is it, is it making a... Is anybody going to win the prize? I sure hope so. I'm making it tough, though. It's 30 <laughs> packs of Robo Worms. They got to earn that one. I mean, that, so that's a tough one. I, I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's talk about. Let's give that's them a chance. Is that a trick? Is that a trick? Is that, is that a trick question? Because there's the elites, and then there's the 150s. I mean, I, I don't know if you count those. Is that you know? Where I started there. The, uh, I, 150s. I specifically said your first elite series event. What lake was it, and how much money did you? Yeah. Make? That so it's the it's your first elite series event that you ever fished. These people are just sure. throwing answers well, out there. The, the year and and the amount of money you won. I mean, it's a real easy. Way I have to no pick. idea. There, there's a lot of resources out there. They could figure it out. And it's for thirty packs of rolls. Oh yeah, ones. they could look it up. All right. So, but let's let's talk about something you do know right now for a hundred percent that you know. Okay, what uh, could you tell me, Aaron, the name of Santa's reindeers? Do you know the name of Santa's reindeers? Uh, Rudolph, Prancer, that's it. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? There's, there's nine of those guys. I don't know. I forgot that a long, long time ago. Think of the song. Think, think of the Rudolph, song. Man, I don't know. <laughs> Bum, 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 Rudolph. Da, da, da. It was Rudolph, I guess. You yeah. got you got Rudolph, and, and you you got Prancer. Prancer. You got Prancer. Yeah. I mean, come on. Think think of a. They, they, they What's can, one that rhymes with Prancer? Yeah. There's Dancer. A, Dancer. There you there, go. There's another one. Okay, come on. Give me some more. Prancer. <laughs> <laughs> Name Santa's reindeer. I, can't, I don't know. Where's Leslie? What are you clean the floor with? Where is Leslie? She knows. My kids are fell. My kids passed out. Damn, they, they would probably know more. Than they I would do. know too. There's nine reindeer. My what? mom's driving. Yeah, ask her. Ask your mom the name of Santa's reindeers. You got Dancer, Prancer, and Rudolph so far. What's the name of Oh, Blitzer. She got another one. Blitzer. Okay. There, that's Bl- yeah, Blitzen. But oh. we Blitzer's way cooler than Blitzen. Okay, you got Blitzen. So I, no- I, I I don't know which one's the cool. Probably Rudolph's the coolest. So it's in the lead. Rudolph was in in. The, I don't know. And he had a shiny nose. How many? I don't know how many reindeer there are. There's nine, dude. You got four so far. Dancer. Oh, I'm, I have four more. Yeah. Yeah. So you you need five more. Yeah. You got Dancer, Prancer, Blitzer, and Rudolph. So we. <laughs> so we need five more reindeers. Five more. Uh, Donner. Donner. Donner there you go. Yes, you are doing a mega cruising after. now. What did you Dasher? say? Dasher? Dasher, yes. What else, Jordan? Yes. Jordan helped me. That's good. You got three left, dude. Dasher. You got three left. Nobody else does any. My son's asleep. You got three left. So you got Dasher. You know <laughs> that's Dasher. Three, that's three of us to get, what, seven? You're, you got three left. You got six. So the song goes, you know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Beep. Prancer, that's another one, right? Yeah, you said that. You already got that one. You know Dancer and 
oh, Prancer okay. and Bleep and Bleep. Blitzer. And you got Blitzer. Blitzen. Dancer. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm. I got to keep me on the line so I figure it out. It okay. might be a long time. Yeah. No. No. We like this. I, I. This is good. So one of them is named after a cleaning detergent. One of them is named after a cleaning detergent. That's true. A cleaning detergent. Yes. The name of the Comes in it's a, also something that flies through the sky. <laughs> What'd you say? Don? Don. <laughs> Don. <laughs> no, it comes in a green can, and it's a cleaning detergent, and it also falls from the sky. Falls from the sky? Yeah. It comes in a green container. My mom's in that one. Yeah. You actually saw one Cascade? once. You actually saw one in the desert Cascade? once. Remember you told us about uh-huh. this. You saw one fall from the sky in the desert. Star? Shooting star? It's, it's, meteor? It's like, yeah, but that's not the reindeer's <laughs> name. They don't have the shooting star reindeer. Here, here's another hint on a different one, Aaron. It's uh, it's also used for Valentine's Day often. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. shoots, it shoots it's arrows. A, it's a Valentine's Day it's character. A little, it's a little elfin character. It's all, not only a reindeer, but a Valentine's Day character. Comet? Yeah, Comet. Comet's there the you cleaning go. detergent. You're, you're, batting, <laughs> you're batting 300. That's good. You got two left. So you got the Valentine's Day two character, left. and then there's kind of a, 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 a slutty reindeer. There's a Valentine's one. <laughs> yeah. Funny reindeer? Yeah, a slutty one. Cupid. Cupid, there's Cupid. Cupid, one of them. Yep, yep Cupid's yep. one of them. Yeah, and uh, and then there's one left. It's you also one more? there's there's one more. It's you also said something with, uh, what is it Valentine's Day? You got that? Yeah, you already got that's that Cupid. one. That was oh, that's Cupid. Cupid. That's Cupid. Yeah. Now what's the other, uh, other one's a funny the other, one? The other one could be like a like a very attractive woman. Yeah, it's a very attractive woman or a provocative woman also, but also a, a, a super... very attractive woman or a pro- 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 provocative woman. Yes. Um, or I, I think there's, <laughs> I think Andre Moore named a bait after this too. Oh, Vixen? Yeah, there it is. There Boom. It is. There, there it him. is right there. Vixen's okay. the winner. Congratulations, Aaron Martin. You, you won. You won the reindeer contest. That was the Woo. whole, yes. That was the whole Martin's family collaborating on some reindeer it goodness. It was. It was three of us. Yeah, that was really good. That is t- called teamwork. My son, my son's out. He may have. <laughs> he would have nailed it. I mean, he he would have nailed it. Maybe that. he may have, he may have got he may have got those quicker. So here's a, here's the question: If you were if you were one of those reindeer, which which reindeer would you be? Uh, well, probably. I mean, it'd be easy one, Rudolph in the front. I can see better. Because you're, cause you're like the leader of the pack. I like to see. I like to be in the front, yeah. Yeah, you, you got to see what's going on. What, um, do, do you want... I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get pooped on either. What if, what if one of deer <laughs> in the back of deer pooped or something? It's flying in your face. Yeah, so Rudolph has the definite advantage there as far as not getting hit with... Uh, or if, with... He has, if somebody has gas or something and it's farting a lot, yeah. yeah, they blow in your face the whole time. Rudolph has the advantage of over deer dung and uh, projectile. You have yes. fresh air. Yes, that, yes, that's a definite advantage. Yes. Now, <laughs> now, if I was now, I would pick you as to be more of like Vixen, the reindeer Vixen, and here's why. <laughs> here's why I would pick you as Vixen because um, Vixen is known for his skills in magic. And also known for, he, he's, he's slightly tricky. He's slightly tricky. And, and you are, Aaron. You know that. You're, you're, you're slightly tricky. And you are definitely practiced in the skills of magic, as evident with the roboworm named Aaron's Magic. So I think that if you were to be a reindeer, you would be Vixen. Now, here is the question. How would you use it to your advantage in the 2018 Elite Series? If you were able to obtain Vixen the reindeer's powers, mm. well, make the fish bite, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Knows magic. That's magic. Sure. We can. It probably knows where to go and and to make him bite. It's wizardry. I guess it's kind of like reindeer wizardry. Yeah, rain, reindeer Aaron Martin's wizardry. Is what... I'm hoping I can pull some wizardry out this next class. That'd be nice. Yes. That, uh, that's, I've, that, been, I've been fishing a lot, though. I've been fishing more than ever, so maybe that's going to help. 
Are I you... don't know. Last year I didn't fish at all. There's plenty of years. So I've been fishing a lot. So maybe get some wizardly bet. Wizardly bet. Yeah. <laughs> wizardly Aaron is what we're hoping. Wizardly for. practice. Yeah. Because... It, I mean, I made it. I made it. I made it rain. I made it rain here in California. When's the last time it rained here? March. I don't know, but I mean, we're driving. We're driving home in, in the San Fernando Valley, and it's actually just rains, which is. That is wow. doesn't that, rain here. In that's California. definitely vixen ass skills. Yeah, yeah, that, that's you did that. Do we have a winner yet? Did anybody guess yeah. this? Oh yeah, a long time ago. Oh, they did. Who's the who won? Aaron, we're going to give you the answer. Who won it to this first? Okay. A YouTube viewer. A YouTube viewer got this. Level to bark. Bard. Level two bard. Is he getting to cosplay? Mm-hmm. I just don't know. Level two <laughs> level two bard. He he won. And what's the correct answer? It's Lake Amistad. Lake Amistad. And oh, what? In 2006. Lake Amistad. Two thousand six. And you won zero dollars. That is correct. L- level to bard, you won. Yeah. You won the Robo Warm 30 pack right there. Wow. Woo! Woo! Level two bard. Lake Amistad 2006. That was the first ever Elite Series event. And Aaron, you won no money on that one. I know. I, was, uh, I think I had a couple, two or three tough ones there for some reason. When I first went there. It's weird. Yeah, you came Amistad. In, I actually know you came in 60th place. Then I was very upset. Yeah, not very good. I was super. Not ups- very good. I was super upset. Hey, um, let's um, let's talk about uh, real quick. And I'm getting the the countdown, but you know what? This is Aaron Martin's. We we got to ask Aaron a couple things. Aaron, what? Uh, let's talk about one of your favorite childhood memories of Christmas. Can you do that? Can you tell us a little Aaron Martin's childhood memory Christmas story? Oh man, on Christmas Day. Probably when I was got my first real bike, my first bike, real nice new mongoose. Remember nice. that mongoose? It was like a chrome mongoose. Yes. I think I was like I was young. I, was like it a mini? 11, maybe. Is it a mini mongoose? Yeah, ten or eleven or some. And, you know, it was like a mountain bike, like fifteen speeds, all bright chrome, and that that was like one of my best presents ever because I think I had like a used like Schwinn before that, like a beat up old Schwinn. I rode my bike constantly out here in California. It's like Back then, when I grew up, there was like so many trails, and there was a lot, of, a lot of like a lot of just natural kind of California terrain where I lived, where I grew up. So I always drove a, I rode a bike like every day, like it was, you know, probably eight to twenty miles a day as a kid. So I got the new bike. That was probably one of the coolest things I ever got. Was it like did your mom did your mom goes. have it for you like under the tree with a bow on it? I think it was if I don't if I remember right it was like yeah it was next to a tree in the morning when I woke up got out and there's a big bike there big chrome brand new bike and you were like thirteen I was like dang so you I was, I was younger than that probably younger so you still were wearing like Aaron Martin footy pajamas at that time <laughs> <laughs> and you came down I don't know I can't remember what I wore back then I probably wore who knows <laughs> yeah I wear shorts a lot it is California it's like eighty degrees a lot in California in December so. And you I had, wear shorts, and I was barefoot all the time. And you probably had a Dukes of Hazard t-shirt. T-shirt, on. yeah. I would think I had short shorts on, a t-shirt, and no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds about right. That that's an amazing Christmas memory. I mean, and it's it's so cool that that's the first one that popped in your well, head. I mean, I, I just, yeah, that was like as far as presents go. But I've had lots of good memories with family and stuff. I mean, we've always had good Christmases, but yeah, been fortunate that way. But yeah, that was one of the ones that popped out. Yeah, my, man. My, my first real bike. And it was a mongoose or a red line? What did you say, mongoose? Mongoose. It was a, it was a mongoose. Nice. Chrome. chrome mongoose. The old chrome molly mongoose. Mountain bike. That is. Yeah. And, and, and cool. And yeah, I mean, go go from a Schwinn with a banana seat on it to that was pretty. <laughs> that's big a yeah. big deal. That's yeah. a big deal too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I I had that Schwinn with the banana deal. seat too, and my, mine had a bumper sticker of Snoopy on it, and it, and it said "Don't eat yellow <laughs> snow." That was the uh, that was the bumper sticker on my banana seat. Mine my, my my banana seat was blue with a it had like a metallic blue frame with like a sparkly blue banana seat. Classic <laughs> Christmas. That was nice Christmas memory, and that was probably a Christmas <laughs> present too. That's awesome. Hey, you, could, you could you could ride two people on the seat though. It's pretty cool. Yeah, your your best babe. <laughs> the <banana seat. laughs> And then you put baseball Back cards in the off. spokes to keep things going, make it seem like you were chips, like you were on the California Highway Patrol. Back then, 
in those days. Hey, I thought I was back then. Oh yeah, Aaron. Um, Merry Christmas, man, to you and the um and the Martins family, dude. And um and again, thank you so much thank for you. your for your support of this show through throughout the years, all the way back to the Bass Buzz Radio days, man. We we really appreciate and the support. Thank you. We're gonna, we'll run a, we'll run someday together. And uh, I want to say Merry Christmas again to everybody, and have a happy New Year, and be safe. And enjoy the holidays. And dude, thank you um, for so, giving that am- to Robo Worm for giving away that amazing pack, yeah. bro. That it's thirty packs yeah, of Robo no Worms. That's like a nine million dollar. It's like nine million dollars worth of <laughs> Robo Worms. That's a big value. That's a, that's a big uh, deal. Hey, that's funny. Um, can you take us out with your best uh, Santa impersonation? Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas. That, that, that sounds good. That <laughs> was the best Santa impersonation <laughs> I have ever heard. Aaron Martins, thank you so much. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Best of All luck right, on the 2018 you. Elites, Merry man. Christmas. That's Aaron Martins right there. Hey, <laughs> always, always amazing with Aaron. Hey, put the power poles down, okay? We're coming right back with hopefully. Okay. Are we gonna? Try- so yeah. I go, so I go out there and I flip laydowns and I kick the dead horse and there's four hours gone by and I don't got a fish. <laughs> I don't know when to adapt, yet it seems so natural for you. How do we do it? So most of us, uh, when we fish as much as we do, I don't think we have a game plan, but I think the really good anglers are ready to change it at a drop of a hat. I could immediately do something different, even not do what you thought, and just start doing something else. And I think that's really important sometimes, the conditions. Uh, The only thing I really pay attention to is weather ahead of time, um, you know, the temperatures a week, you know, a week or two or a month before what, what it's been like for the last month, you know, what's going to happen like this hurricane's coming right now for that's going to change the bite at Georgia a lot. So I have ideas how to adapt to that, you know, maybe higher water, maybe a lot of water come in. It might be colored, get some wind. So it's going to change things there. Definitely from what it's been like. And that's Chatug you're referring to, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I go into the day just knowing, uh, the moon's on a waning or it's coming or, you know, I just try to. I, I, I use those things. I don't really uh, don't really have game plans a whole lot of times. I, I kind of know what I'm going to do and where I'm going to go, but see, that's sometimes I, cha- sometimes I change my mind or figure it out on the way there, run into the spot. <laughs> it's and that's what I mean. And I'm going to disagree with you because you said that's what makes good anglers. That that's not what makes good anglers. That's what makes great anglers i think the best of the best they are a lot like that yeah they change a drop of a hat it they make changes real quick and don't have real fixed game plans i might go to you know north instead of south you know change it at takeoff or and i have had game plans and i've i've messed up doing them too so it's it's fishing too there's a lot of, that's where the luck kind of comes into play because you can make a wrong decision it might just might be not might might not be the fish. It might be like fishing pressure, the amount of boats are in an area, or the amount of guys that found the same fish, and then you can't get on some of the stuff you want to, and that that will change your your natural thought of what to do. So you gotta throw in those uh, factors too. Yeah, and again, that's what makes the the great or the excellent angler com- compared to a good or a, a a guy that fishes, you know, four days a week or whatever. Yeah, I, or, I should or be, a couple days a month. Yeah, I I should be better than I am for as much as i fish <laughs> i'm better at talking they're, they're, Aaron. Uh, they're 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 tricky especially this time of year this is an awkward time for fish and uh it can be it can be frustrating for a lot of anglers this time of year it, and it really is and and another thing i notice that not only adaptating mentally adapting mentally but also as far as bait choices you don't you give zero f's what you catch them on you don't care if you're throwing an old Panther Martin spinner, or if you're you're throwing the new uh, the new Do spin the the, the that, Ronnie James Do spin bait. The Martins in the boat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't really care. Uh, you want to catch them on something that you have a high catch ratio if you can, like a single hook. You know, something with a single hook. But you know, if it's a crank bite, I'm not gonna I'm not throw a crank bait. Or yeah, it's a good way of quick way of catching good fish too. Uh, but it's not not always like that. I try to catch them on what I think's the best and what I have the best chances of. Those fish, when they do bite the lure of catching them and you know, getting them in the boat, and, it may be a swim bait. It may be, uh, you know, it just depends. It, if I can catch them on a swim bait over a crank bait, I'll a lot of times throw a swim bait just because you have a single hook and you lose very few fish on it. Sure, be- because because of that 
hook up ratio. Boom. But then I mean, if they bite funny and they're not eating it really good, you're better off throwing a crankbait. If you're getting you know, bumped a lot on a swim bait, then you obviously should probably try some kind of vibration or a crankbait. Yeah, where they're knocking it, got some more trebles yeah, on it. Yeah, things like that we learned over the years. I mean, we're fishing all the time, so we have a lot of time to adapt to those situations. Now, you, you mentioned over the years. Who, who's a better bass fisherman? Aaron Martins in, let's say, 2005 or Aaron Martins in 2018? Who's a better bass fisherman? I'd say now. I mean, I fished a lot more back then, so I had chances of pre-practice, which definitely helps. I was uh, By that time, I was a pretty good angler. I know a lot more than I did uh, then as far as technical stuff, uh, like grass fishing and all the types of diff- different fishers I've been in the last you know, 10, 11, 12, it's like 13 years. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like... I've had, I've had a lot of situations where I've learned a lot, and uh, that's how you learn fishing. Them. It's just like riding a bike. You, you can always get back on a bike and ride it, but you're not going to be as good as when you were when you rode it a lot. So fishing is kind of the same way. It helps to be on the water a lot, and uh, but you do retain... Like, like riding a bike or running, you do retain some of that memory. And when you get back into it, it comes back pretty quick. So, I mean, this time of year, a lot of guys take a lot of time off. And some of the younger guys are trying to, you know, retain knowledge. They're out there fishing, which is good. That's why some of those guys are such good anglers. And uh, they fish a lot. But for the older guys and the veterans, uh, I mean, a lot of us are doing shows. Like, I just got back from a, a long trip, a good good trip in Japan. And and now I gotta go to a meeting tomorrow. I got, I, you know, I'm busy all the time. I can't go fishing hardly ever. But <laughs> <laughs> bassing ain't easy. Yeah, Eleven year old, do, and a, you gotta and do year old now. So yeah, it's, it's busy. But you know what? It's let's think about this. You've been at this what, like nineteen, twenty years fishing professionally 19, now? Twenty-six years, I think now. How many? Twenty-six. Twenty-six professionally. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my Aaron has grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, but let, let's look at this. I got a few stats. Do you believe in resurgence of baits? Like, okay, so you, you're wrecking them on a bait for a long period of time, and then nobody's fishing it, and then you bring that bait back into play? Oh, yeah. I mean, I carry, I like the Bagley's baits. I like the Balsa baits. I still carry some of those and some of the old top otters. I mean, I, there's, there, I carry just about everything that's caught them good at one point or another. That's probably, <laughs> probably stupid that I do that, but I do carry too much, and I don't use it 90 eight percent of the time but you never know like rats and stuff the big top water rats or some of the old big top waters or, or swim baits the big old swim baits jointed baits there's just, there's so many baits like that that catch fish really well and they'll catch fish anywhere too it's not just in california they work you know out here too everywhere is is your is your boat packed to the gills it is it is it's still still one of the fastest on tour and it's the biggest <laughs> boat but for some reason it still runs good um it can't be all the driver but uh <laughs> He's a three-time U.S. Open champion. He's a three-time BASS Angler of the Year. He's an FLW champion. He's a BASS champion. And now a Bass Pro Tour champion. Ladies and gentlemen, we give to you, live from The Rock, the one and only Curious Snatcher, Aaron Martins. Yes. Yes. Is this really? Thanks, for Dean. Is this really Aaron? Uh, I just. That's funny. I just passing Dean Rojas. That's the first person I've talked to all day, and you guys are on the radio. Nice. Tell Dean they to stop pranking 10, us. They came within ten feet of ten feet of each other. He was going one way, I was going the other way. Really? Right away. Did you tell him you were going to be on Stray Cast? To tune in? No, I kept going. I promise I have to run right now, but I'll, I'll idle a little bit. I'm running out of time today. I got till uh, what half hour after sunset. I'll be out here every minute. Dude, that's amazing, and you're actually out on Table Rock right now as we speak. Yeah, and I start. I start tomorrow. Tomorrow's the derp. I might be catching better than I was last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't say that. You didn't, I didn't say, say that. I didn't say nothing. No, I didn't say nothing. Well, I can tell yeah, by your you know, tone. I don't want. I don't want to jinx myself. Struggling. No. Yeah, struggling. It's, it's, a, it's a grind. Yeah. It's a grind. Um, oh yeah. It's the, the high, good, but it's a grind. High water. Uh, grind. M- muddied up. Your your fish are in a neutral mood. 
uh, you know, you, if you if you can, if you can get back to them in that real shallow stuff that you're fishing, you yeah. know, if you can get the Ooh. if you can get the push Button. poles, if you can get the push poles to like them, it's like a ten minute bite window. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's that ten <laughs> minutes in that day where you need to, you need to get that fifty pounds. But dude, seriously, congratulations, man, on the win. At Thank Table you. Rock. I mean, it's it's absolutely. I know. I've been so I've been so close. I, I started feeling like that was never going to happen. I, poor Andy he hasn't won one either. He's fished a bunch of them. I. It's just crazy how uh, close I've been so many times and never put the lid on the pot. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> and and I finally did it. He doesn't know what's yeah, wrong with him. Nothing wrong with you. There's not. That's Aaron Martin's. I mean, that's you. That, that, that's the deal, man. And you had a good derp, man. You you played it out to fit you, didn't you? Your win at Table Rock. You, oh, I I I actually did a lot better in practice. Like kind of like the last two days here. I, I was catching well over 100 pounds. I, I felt like I didn't really had to. I felt like I was in the right thing pretty much right away. I figured him out, and uh, so I mean, when when you figure him out like that, you just keep building on it. That's why that's kind of. I, I haven't been to my old spots. Oh, I got a fish on. That's crazy. You have no idea how good the fishing is at Table Rock. I can't. Sh- I can't shake. I- I'm hooking like one out of ten fish. I can't shake them off. <laughs> can we, can I interview Mama. one of those fish, please? Once you catch one. I want to. No. I want to talk to another, another one. Small yeah, one. sorry, I'm distracted. Dude, this I, I is casted. I, I was just idling a second ago. Yeah, oh, this, this is pound, amazing. Pound, this, uh, pound twelve ouncer. That's the ama- That's you that's know. a scorable bass. Scorable bass, you right no, there. I, you have no idea. <laughs> Did it touch you your body? No Don't let it hope, touch your I hope, body. I hope. I hope things is good. I'm not myself i hope everything goes the way it's been going uh, and of course we do too and and you had a you had a great derby aaron okay let's let's not i like table it. rock yeah. and it's, it's like it, 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 it's just i mean i don't i don't like drop shot and, I, and actually technically i didn't win the tournament the last day I caught more of them more way more fish on i didn't catch a lot of drop shot i caught no, no drop shot in that afternoon yeah. I didn't drop shot until I had 47 pounds in the boat <laughs> i didn't put a drop shot in the water until i had almost 50 actually i caught Almost a third of my uh, two thirds of my fish on other than a drop shot. So other, like other than a good, drop but. shot, and other than what was listed in the media, is there another missing factor, another bait that we don't yeah, know about? I, I, yeah, I said the drop shot pattern out deep. No, that wasn't that wasn't what I was doing. I mean, that's what I was doing in the afternoon, but not in the morning. Well, we saw a little flurry now, there. Now, now we start. Now we start up here. We start at like. I got fish tomorrow. I'm gonna be out here till almost nine o'clock, and and we have to. Uh, I think uh, we uh, take off at like eleven thirty tomorrow. Yeah, it's a late, it's a late in the, in the That's morning. right. That's crazy. Twelve to eight. That's hey, I'm not, I'm gonna have a pan. I'm gonna have a panic attack when my alarm goes off at seven. <laughs> You're gonna freak like, out. Oh, Your body out. clock. <laughs> but you know what? That's a great I, uh, idea. That's a great idea, Aaron. That you guys are starting the the tournament late. I mean, cool. I think for a for a fan's point of view, how many people? You know, it's, it's a that, lot. Di- it's a lot different. Uh, at fishing it from noon till. It is a lot different than like six till two or three because uh, it's a totally different bite. That's how I fish anyway. Wait. I just yeah, go like when to, I get up. I'd right? like to implement that in all derbies, please. Yeah, and <laughs> and the fact that it just opens up the window for more people to view the live event. Um, yeah, it, it makes it more interesting, I guess. I mean, not everybody just fishes from dawn till till two or three o'clock. A lot of guys come out like this, like especially it seems like everybody starts getting on the water about ten or eleven. They're all a bunch of late risers here. How yeah. about those? I, t- I drink coffee till like 10, and then I go fish. And then just come in whenever I want. That's how you do it, isn't it? I know. That's how it should be. It should be a more like relaxing and like, they should mix it up. I'm, I'm totally stoked about it. But I'm not going to have a panic attack in the morning, I'm sure. No. I wake up and it's sunny out. <laughs> it's going to be weird. It's going to be really weird. Wake up and it's sunny out. <laughs> but the bite is, I would say the bite's totally different than last week completely different i haven't been to my spot yet or why i want it i haven't, I haven't i hopefully i'm gonna check them while i'm talking to you guys that i'm pretty close to my best spot probably a mile from it are, are you worried about oh, poachers I got, on, I got, on that I got spot fish on. sorry no we're, <laughs> oh, get, come on go ahead get, oh he, he had oh no i didn't no let go of it the stupid fish if he don't really, really did fast enough he hooked himself Sorry, I got so many that it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> Are you worried about people poaching your best stuff that they might have saw? Yeah. On- well, there's a high school tournament going out Saturday, 150 boats. So that's gonna be a. I I got I, I'm I got so many spots. 
It's not no joke. It's not a small mouth. So it's what if spot right here? I never fish a spot ever. What if somebody's on your spots? What will you do? You just go to another one, or uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a pound thirteen ounces. Hold on, let me get him off the hook. I said no, I do one fourteen. He's close to two. So you're guessing uh, these, or you're? I've been, I've been, I've been shaking them off until now. Now I've talked to you guys, and I can't shake them off. It's funny. <laughs> I tried to shake them off. He ate it again. Cut that barb off. It's crazy. Man. Uh, no, I, I need this bait tomorrow. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm leaving this spot though. That's a good spot. Yeah, get out of there. <laughs> Keep graphing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty uh and pretty impressive in the afternoons here. It's you told really impressive in the morning and it's really impressive in the afternoons. Like late like from four o'clock on it's it's pretty much lights out. Hey, you told me that you, crazy. you spent you told me yesterday you spent sixteen hours graphing. Is that real? You did that? Yeah. Wow. Uh prob- probably total, yeah. That's a Today lot. I spent probably six to seven hours graphing. Yeah, it's a lot of graphing. And if you had to guess, out of that 16-hour time and the dots that you marked, how many of those have you fished? Uh, today, it's been a little – this is, this is a, like actually a slow day. It's been kind of post front today. We had that big storm yesterday, and they bit like crazy yesterday. So today, this morning, it was 60 degrees, 58 degrees this morning. It was like uh, – like nothing was moving, no bait. It was just weird, you know. It had that off feel to it. Like I don't think, I don't think the skirt track had been going off at all this morning. And uh, but you know, you had, I had to fish. I, had, I, I you can't, you couldn't grab them. They were hard to pick up on the sonar on my hummingbird. So I, so I actually had to fish a lot of spots. I was getting bites, but I couldn't pick them up. Which now in the last like four or five hours, like right there's a three or four of them. I can pick them up real good now. Problem is, I only have about an hour left. So, gosh, there's a lot of them right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, Sorry, so let's let's thought. put it into into perspective. Uh, on on the... I just found a I just found a juicy one right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This is amazing to me. Uh, but it, hey, Aaron, so I, put it into I Aaron. So thoughts on, I don't know where to start. Yeah, hey, Aaron, I, I got to ask you this. I want to put this into perspective for those that are that are viewing and listening out there of how yeah. great a day fishing, everyday fishing that you had at Table Rock during the, your victory derby. There, you, so I mean, much you, fun. You, you so caught much like. Fun. You had, yeah, I mean, I, every morning I come on reaction, like, for the first two, three hours, as a blast, and then the fish would settle down, and, and that drop shot was working really well. I, I haven't I haven't caught fish. I think I caught, like, one fish so far this, this time on a drop shot. I'm not catching on a drop shot now. Dude, but, uh, uh, yeah, so was, all your competitors phenomenal. just don't want me to ask you questions, all your competitors that are listening right now, and they just want to hear you talk because they know you'll give I something know. away. You know that, right? You know, know that's I, what's I, going on. I, I do that sometimes. Yeah, I slip. Sorry. I'm gonna, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do my best not to, to to let you give anything away. I promise you that. But here's what I want to say, that 40 fish a day, 41 fish a day, you average. Now, when a, a regular guy that goes out and catches 41 bass in a day, it's like a dream day. Okay, that's a dream day for a lot of people. Some people get six bites in a day. You know, no, or, not table rock. Not on table, table rock. rock. I'm putting it's, it. I'm, it's, a, it's a special lake. It's a special lake. I know it is, but I'm talking about Murica. You know, like just a regular old Murican lake. It's not that good. Yeah, you guys are knocking it out. Yeah, no, I mean, well, we we fish them, we fish them, we fish them all the time. It's this is this is always like I mean, table rock's one of those lakes where pretty much any time of year on any system, uh, full front, low pressure, high pressure, it doesn't matter. You can always I mean, they're a little trickier to find, but they always bite here. Like, you almost always catch them. This morning was about as tough as it gets, and they were still biting. There's so many fish. I mean, there's so many that you actually have to. There's so many in this lake, yeah. You have to practice. And and I'm not. I mean, last week, I. uh, For every one I caught, there was 10 I didn't catch. I mean, that's how many fish were dead. I can't get them all that. I mean, they were hard. Some were hard to get the bite, and they're. But you have to. You have to practice fish management, don't you? I've never seen it in a in a Bass Pro Tour Uh, event. You you left fish. It seemed like you left them, bro. You left fish. Not so much here. No. We can keep on catching. So you just burn them out. You find them, you're burning them. Well, I, like I said, every one you catch is 10 with it. <laughs> He's catching them right now, right before the derby. <laughs> That's amazing, and he don't care. Seven more right there. <laughs> That's amazing. I find them right now. Boy, they, they, it's really nice right now. They're, right now they're lifting up off the bottom so you can see them. Really, I just found another school. 
They're uh, <laughs> yeah, they're 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 fun at showing themselves. Like for like for six seven hours, say you can you can grab a fish. I know I know what they're doing. They're just laying on the bottom. Hey, so I know you sandbagged almost every uh, source of media uh, about your win and uh, prior to this event, since you're starting the new derby tomorrow on the same lake. But I, I want to ask you this: a little bit of information that I read. You were throwing the spinner bait some. You said you were throwing a spinner bait some. Okay. Um, spinner bait, swim bait, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, swimmer too. You're a tackle freak, just like myself and a lot of us listening when i talked to you yesterday on the phone when you were stuck in the marina you were working on stuff but, i'm a little obsessive on tackle yeah yes. yeah a little, a little crazy i want to sure. know why i want to know why you picked a 7-2 heavy action rod for throwing your spinner baits on only 14 pound line it wasn't like you were in crazy cover and everything oh, like I why to town this week uh uh it's a uh, yeah i don't I ever throw that light line with a uh, spinner bait I actually went to a seven three medium heavy this this term. I picked, I stepped it up a little bit. Well, you had a heavy. You said you were throwing uh, a heavy. Be, so. It was a heavy crankbait rod. So. Oh, that makes sense now. Okay. So, no, it's it's graphite. It's, it's a it's a pretty stiff rod, but I was making real long casts. And you got a light line like that. That's gonna be or any bait. You gotta get the stretch out. And that's why I was using. I mean, I, like I said, I went to a seven three, which is actually quite a bit beefier. Just so you can stick them. Gotcha. Because I'm casting over, over, a, you know, I'm getting a bit hundred feet out. Yeah, I was curious. It seemed, it seemed like I've, I've been in your boat. I've seen what you throw spinner baits on. It seems a little. Uh, usually heavy duty. Usually, usually heavy, like seven foot medium heavy or seven three medium heavy with a twenty pound normally. Right. But yeah, you know, these clear lakes, and I'm, I mean, I'm fishing a, I'm fishing a, like a, in this clear water, and I'm, I'm letting it sink a bit too. So, uh, I, I didn't want either like a big heavy spinner bait real good. Like a one ounce. I mean, they'll bite it, but nothing like a smaller one. But you can't get a smaller spinnerbait down twenty pounds. So that's why I use. That's why I use lighter line. I, There's I, the answer. Kind of, it's kind of like typical of, of a. All right, California stop. Lake stop block. there. You're get. You're. He's telling too much now. <laughs> we got to stop you. I know. Got, All right. <laughs> I'm see. I'm doing you a favor, Aaron. I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, again. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at my at my best hole right now. There's two. There's two elite guys on it. Look at that. Aha! Uh-huh. I can actually see my spots about three quarters of them. That's about my own way. Two guys aren't. Really? Fuckers. Uh, <laughs> <suckers. laughs> they weren't very <laughs> I mean, they 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 uh, they told everybody where we were fishing, kind of between this bay and that bay, and that's kind of messed up. Uh, but I, I didn't go. I, I guess I haven't back. To, I haven't been back to my best spots yet. I haven't checked them. <laughs> All right, we're we're. I, 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 no, no, it's crazy. I'm catching them differently. And uh, I did check uh, a couple of them, and they're stacked. So, I mean, my my stuff from last week's working too. But there's there's so many, like you said, there's so many bass in Like there, there's always fish doing different things. No, dude, I'm work I, again. Congratulations on the Table Rock victory, and I hope that you you knock it out again starting tomorrow. So let's let's just leave Table Rock alone now. Let's let's leave it alone. All right, good. Let's let's bring our mind to another place, okay? Just keep catching them. Yeah, you just keep catching well, them and we're we're going to other things. We're going to bring it to another place. I want to talk to you about endurance, Aaron. I uh, I feel Yeah, you're a runner, aren't you? Yeah, well, exactly. And and I feel that because I run, um it gives me an edge maybe over other 50-year-old men. I run, therefore I am. Or maybe over over uh, men that are that are not that are less than my age. Okay, yeah, because that time away and that conditioning, it, uh, it it basically disciplines you as a human. Are are you following me, Aaron? Yeah, it, it's it's a it's, it's a huge. I running a couple of years ago. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's something I think you have to do some kind of cardio when you hit forty for sure. Exactly, and I don't know. Uh, if- like right now, right now I've been I've been fishing bull shoals five uh, almost all week except for a day, uh, two days. I, I besides two days, I, I fish bull shoals every day, and I ran every day. I ran in the morning and went fishing and like late morning and went to bull shoals and fished every day and then fished two days in a row here all day till nine o'clock at night. And uh, I, as long as I eat, I'm fine. Yeah. I don't get tired at all. And I, and I maybe I should rephrase it. I, I may have said I, I thought it was better, but what I feel is that it gives me an edge. It's definitely an edge. You a, it, it gives you, uh, yeah, because you don't get tired. You, uh, it it you, gives uh, you an edge. You, now, all you do, I mean, basically you can get very little sleep even as long as you uh, eat. 
it, it, as he said it, if, if I'm fine. And you know what, man? It makes me feel young. Cardio makes you feel young, doesn't it? That's the key. Dude, I mean, I'm like... Yeah, it makes you move faster, move better, and uh, it, it yeah knocks twenty years off your uh, off your age probably. Absolutely, you know what That's else it. knocks twenty years off your life? I when we used to go to Jamaica all the time, there was a place in Ocho Rios called <laughs> called Brainwash <laughs> Falls. Okay, serious, true I've story. Been to, I've been in, to Jamaica. Okay, well, this is in Ocho, and it's off of Duns River Falls, so it's in it's called brainwash falls and the rastafarians brought me there they called me wildflower i don't know why but <laughs> so anyway they, you're here. yeah I mean, it could be it could be so anyway flower town you put your head underneath this ice cold waterfall okay and it adds 20 years to your life every time you do I've it heard about that yeah, yeah it's for real yeah. the rastas believe it but anyway so running does the same thing man but here's what i want people to know so <laughs> Ryan's cracking up. So th- basically, man, you finished a complete marathon, the Philly Marathon. What was it like in, in what was it like, eight, six years ago, eight, seven years ago, something? Yeah, it was my first, uh, I, for you people who don't run, you're thinking about it. It was six months after I started running. I never ran before. I, I run now years before that. I, I didn't do nuts. anything for like 10 years. I got, I got fat and unhealthy. So I started running, and then six months later, I was running. I ran a marathon. Dude, after running, so. And you had walking pneumonia <laughs> two weeks prior to running the event. What's that? You had didn't you have pneumonia prior to one, running the event? I had a, yeah, like walking pneumonia or something. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> a week before or something like that. Yeah, and then you that. ran twenty six miles just for the hell of it because you had pneumonia the week before. Yeah, but that I, I shows you. Over it. I still had it a little bit, and I ran it half with the with the stick too. I don't. I got sick last week when I came up here. I guess that Bass Pro Shop to pick something out of uh, stomach virus, which I don't usually get anything that makes me puke. Usually, my stomach's free. Oh, cast it's the, iron, it's but, the Uncle man, Buck's puked, pickled puked peanuts. The, day, yeah. the <laughs> day before last day of practice, which would be today, I was puking. About this time of night, about 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening, I started puking, and then I felt like absolute crap. I was like 20% the first day of the tournament. I mean, I could barely move. I was like I was like a 95-year-old man, honestly. I, I mean, I was super slow. I, I was stumbling. I... I I was having a hard time keeping up with the fish hooking them and stuff, but wow. I I struggled through the first day. The second day I was about sixty five percent and uh by the end of the day I was probably more like seventy five percent and then the next day I felt almost almost good, but I was still kinda of funky. So I didn't eat for three days. Wow. And but you I didn't kept eat, going. I didn't eat the first day of the tournament. You kept and I didn't going. eat I didn't eat really the next day either. Never had breakfast, couldn't eat any food. So I went two day I went three days without food. You, dude, and you that's nuts and you kept no, going you you, you, you obviously fasted. fished the derby just like in the in the in the mar- in the I marathon was, you probably was, wanted to quit so a miserable. zillion i mean I, I did a video that that first day of the morning i didn't want to do one and i i didn't say i was sick anything, but i was like trying i was actually getting nauseous like at that point wow that would have been bass bad. history if you would have puked on the, on the interview bad. hey i got a question yeah, for you runners for you for you two runners here yeah yeah I can't. I can't run because I. I get too. It's too repetitive, and I don't have any. Like what drumming. You, no, I'm doing different <laughs> stuff all the time. <laughs> Not repetitive. Put music on. What do you, What do you <laughs> think about though? I mean, yeah, music, but. Yeah, what well, do you think you about running, when you're just you don't running? Well, when you first running, you don't because you're 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 hating life and you want to die. Trying <laughs> not to die. To yeah, that's, after a while. that's my experience. After you get used to running for a while, you you it's it's just. I mean, if you don't, I, I have to have music. I don't think Pat listens to music, but I, I like, I like music when I run. But it's I, actually no, I, I think it clears your mind. Yeah, I think about fishing a little bit, about the kids. I, I, I can think that I run a lot, so it doesn't. It's your really time, Ryan. I might try this. It's your time. I've been Ryan. skateboarding, which has been great, but um, it's starting to hurt. Yeah, I'm gonna keep skating, but I need to do some running. So all right, music start running. Or Ryan could Ryan better. try jazzercise. Have you, have you ever considered it's a, that? It's a, it's a natural motion that your body does is run. That's what you're built to do. Two legs. I only we're run in the, danger. We're the, we're the most or the highest endurance animal on the planet, I guess. Right? Do, do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a human, a human, a human can go further than any animal. It's crazy. And you can, and you whale, have the, but, wow. the most endurance of any professional bass angler. I can safely say that. I would safely say that. <laughs> There's some pretty fit guys that are fishing this uh, major league fishing, but. But there's I'm, a lot of fatties, too. There's tons of fatties that are doing it, too, and they probably are, like, laughing at you. <laughs> oh, good. there goes Aaron they running do, again. They do, they do pretty good, too. Yeah. They must hurt a little bit in the day. They must be a little bit more tired, I'm sure. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, it's dude, you burn four thousand calories a day bass fishing in tournaments. Is that true? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Nine hours, yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's, you do. Yeah. Four thousand. Four to uh, four to six four to six thousand depends what you're doing, yeah. Wow. If you're on a jerk bait or a big spare bait or some big reaction bait all day, you're actually upwards of six thousand. What about uh Char- what about Charlie Ingram? How much does he burn per day when he's fishing? I don't know. Does he move fast? Yeah, he's not. He doesn't move fast. No. It's no. not it's gotta increase the the blood flow. Yeah. I think. But <laughs> Diamond <so>, Gusts <laughs> are strict. <laughs> so, dude, you tried to start like I mean, Leslie's the one that got you into running, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean you saw she her, she was all, and, all fit yeah, I saw and you're like I mean she she ran cross country in high school, so she had experience doing it. I'd, like I said, I rode a mountain bike when I lived in California, but I came out here and on the road all the time. I was trying to think of a way to bring my mountain bike with me, but that's impossible. So she started running and got super fit just like in a few months. I was like, man, I got to start running. So you better do that. So <laughs> or I, she's going to dump you for a fit guy. It worked the same for me. I lost like 40 pounds in like, uh, what was like two or three months. I lost like almost 40 pounds. That's wow. outstanding. That's amazing. Oh, it's and, it, and it's 30. I'm 190 now. It's the peanut butter and cayenne pepper. Isn't that what you eat? Or what I, you? I've been doing almond butter lately. Oh. I had an almond butter sandwich this morning or today. In my little smoothies I make. Nice. I'm very full. I'm very full right now. I'm not not hungry at all. I should probably be hungry for about another hour and a half, two hours. Well, that's good for There's catching a bass. I got a bite, guys. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> hey, you want to play? Uh, um, you want to play a Shook game? Shook him off. Shook him off. This, this, What's that? JP, you got some? I love What's games. up, JP? This this interview feels so dirty. Like I don't think we've ever done with a competitor the <laughs> official practice the day before he competes. It does feel kind of dark web, doesn't it? it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so let's put a, with an hour left with like ten spots I gotta check. <laughs> okay, well do, we're, here then let's do let's do a little. We're gonna let's do. I, mean, I want to go. I want to go look at my two best spots. I haven't I haven't checked them yet. Do you want to hang up now? There's a like a. No, there's a dude on it right I mean, now, you, one of our guys. You, you <laughs> sound pretty, for him. He's trying to figure him out. You sound pretty confident, to figure him out. <laughs> He does. It's amazing. Yeah, if I, Let him wear him out. If so, I was making bets, I'm putting money on you. Money on Amar. <laughs> right there. Hey, let's, uh, let's take a walk down memory lane, okay? And um, this is uh, called the Derb memory lane game, okay? And, and uh, what I'd like you to do is... Oh, I'm, oh, I'm another bite. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is give you a, a derby that uh, is a special part of your life. And I just want you to give us a brief description of that derby. Can you do that? A fishing derby? Yeah, you'll <laughs> you'll recognize these when I talk to you about them. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm thinking about fishing right now, but I'll try. All right. Are you ready? Let, let's, Aaron, let's take uh, a walk down amazing. memory lane to some very special bass fishing tournaments in your life. Aaron, yes, tell, us, tell us about the 1999 Western Invitational on Lake Orville. Oh, the, the one I caught really, 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 really deep? Yep. That was cool. That was, uh, that was the first national tournament one on a drop shot. The first national tournament one on a drop shot. Look how first, sweet. First tournament, yeah, first national tournament. That's like, historic. You know, I been like... Team tournaments. I actually just catch. Well, how deep was I catching? That's catching my limit in eighty-five, Eight, right? I said I, I said sixty, nine, but I catch my nine-pound limit. Catch my nine-pound limit in eighty-five feet, and then I'd move out to one hundred and thirty feet and catch, and then call them all out by the end of the day. Historic. Catching my uh, one hundred and thirty feet of water. Lake Wheeler. I know people. No, people think I'm crazy when I say that, but the lake's nine hundred feet deep, so it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, Wheeler. You Wheeler. Fizz, you had to fizz those fish, right? You had to pop them all. It's 900, almost 1,000 feet deep. It's one of the deepest lakes. I think it is the deepest lake in the country. Alka-Seltzer. He used Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer. All right. Lake Wheeler, FLW Tour 2003. That was why I didn't have my license with me. Remember that one? Yeah. That's why I'm asking you about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I smashed him, too. And, and there was the, sheriff, the ranger, the sheriff, drove. I was catching every cast, and he drove over my spot to get to me, too. I was, like, catching every cast, and I pulled up. <laughs> I had a license. I had one. I had one, but they were paper archives in the Walmart lost, and I lost my license somehow, and, and they, they couldn't find my license. I, I, I paid cash for it like a ding-dong, which I don't do anymore. Always document. So I honestly had one. Screenshot and document. Honest, yeah, the the 2004. On, uh, 16 pounds. Remember that. What was it, Aaron? Five-inch screen pumpkin Cinco on a, on a 
four aught uh, BMF, which is a heavy cover, heavy cover now, but the 16 pound uh, sniper. I remember that. Nice. There Smoking it is. Them. The 2004 the Western Open. 2004 Western Open. 2000 Western Open. 2004. Four. Four. 2004 Western Open. Where, where was that one at? Oh, gosh. It was out west. <laughs> 2004, 2004 Western Open. Wasn't that Lake Mead? Like probably the last one I won out there. Or the last uh, Open I won out there. Yeah. Last, probably one of the last ones I fished. So you don't remember that one? I can't remember. We'll just mock, mark that Shasta? one off. Shasta? Shasta? No, Shasta. I right thought it was Mead. I don't know. I, like, yeah. I'm go- I do like, uh, this stuff off of memory, so I don't know sometimes. You, won, you won it. Yeah, you won. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I believe it was on the Delta. <laughs> was it on the Delta? The California was Delta. On the Delta? I was. No. No, nah, I don't, I don't think sense. I want to open a Delta. No. 2004 wanna, Western wanna, Open wanna, number wanna, one. Uh, was uh, it? Bassmaster Elite. Delta. Oh, no, you're thinking B A S S. This is W O N. Oh, Wombat? Yeah. Uh, I want I don't know. I've, you, those, those are like a faint memory now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you won. You won like three of them, bro. Yeah, back back in the day. Back in the day. Hey, how about that 2005 Bassmaster Classic at the Three River? Oh, Pittsburgh. I, was when, uh, that, I threw that keeper back and Van Dam won it by, like, what, four ounces or something? Yeah. What do you remember about that? Four, Besides that. Uh, it's all, those are all bad memories, that, that tournament. That was an awful uh, experience. Just let you guys know. I I, I could. It's very depress. It's very it's very depressing. But I, I I lose like seven eight keepers in two days, eight or nine keepers that any any one of them would want it for me. And I kept losing them. That's crazy. Dude, you were so emotionally spent. Oh, what did terrible, you do that night? Tournament. Like, tell me about the night after the final day. Like, what was going on with you, Aaron Martins? More like the morning when I woke up was the worst. Was it? This this tough. Off, and I threw that. I threw that fish back. That was probably that I had in the boat all day that last day. I, I, I'm almost sure what I kept. It was, just, it was like a hair. I was pushing its mouth shut, and it was like a, like a it was like a paper thin margin. You know, it was like right at the line. I tossed it, and uh, and Van Dam barely beat me in that one. Oh. Van Dam also caught. He also had big fish at the tournament the first day. I think Van Dam caught like a three and a quarter, or three and a half pound smallmouth, which was a river. monster there. And I actually, I actually caught more fish than he did. He just got lucky and got a big one. On the flip side, though, if you had brought that fish in and Trip said it was short, you wouldn't have gotten second, right? I would have probably won it. And that's sick. That's 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 made made everything kind of worse. No, I mean, if it didn't if it didn't measure, you would have got penalized. There, 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 there. I heard they were passing fish. They're letting them. They're being easy on them. Aha! Uh, it's one of them. I'm, I'm very, I'm very like. To the, I'm very to the books and very honest. I can't. I, I should have done it, but I mean, what would I have lost? No, not a big deal. I mean, it may have cost me a spot, maybe. Not, not even. It wouldn't have cost me anything to try it. Well, that one's in that the history, man. That's, that's a that's a that's a bad memory. You got any good memories? It's yeah, I got a great. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. a great one. Recent. One. Yes, 2009 <laughs> Gunnersville. Ooh, that was a good one. Yeah, it was a good one. There's a bite. Always. Oh, Almost hooked himself. Uh, I might catch 147. Uh, I think my partner said the first day, and I, like, I think I caught 140 the second day, and I caught over 100 the third day. All on this. I never picked a warm up till the last day. I caught every single one of them on a crankbait. That was a phenomenal tournament. That was 20 pound line, a 2.5 DD. Remember that? Yes, I do. That's another good one. And That's tomato, a good memory. And tomato and sexy shad, the two colors. <laughs> sexy shad in the morning and tomato in the afternoon. It was like, uh, it was unreal. How did you catch that many fish? I, don't, I haven't caught that many fish on crankbait since. I, mean, I catch, oh, I do that at Logan Martin times on. But not that, not, not, I was catching a, the first two days I caught 30 over five pounds a day. Wow. 30 over wow. five a day. And then Jesus. I had a, I had 29 the first three days. And I only had 20 the last day, but I had enough to win. Holy but cow. But 29 the first three days, it was crazy. I had 100 and whatever that was. That is a good memory. Uh, unbelievable. That's, a good, yeah, that's that an good amazing one. memory. Good. Here's an amazing memory. Alpena, Michigan, Bass Pro Tour. I mean, uh, MLF. Alpena, Michigan. MLF. Small Alpena, mouth. Alpena. Small mouth. Uh, Long lake. Well, I've, I didn't win the tournament because I just won my first MLF this last yeah, week. Yeah, but it was so amazing, right? I did win right? some rounds. It was amazing, right? Fishing wise, it's always it's always amazing out there. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. It was a good memory, right? All the, 
very good. See? Except for the last day. That's, I think that's when Kevin won, isn't it? Yeah. Kevin mm-hmm. spinner baited him. Yeah. And jerk baited him. Kevin, man. He put, he put the, he put, yeah, he, he, was, he was putting the hurt to us that day, the last day. <laughs> that was that a good memory. It was a good memory. It was good. It was good. Good memory to the last day. Aaron, you're full of good <laughs> memories. You know that? <laughs> yeah. You, you are, man. I hope. This has been a this has been an experience up here. I, I didn't go home this time, but but we decided for me. My wife's in the at Dirkloss, Todd Dirkloss house with, okay, with Angie. With she Angie. stayed home too, and they're actually helping her do her taxes. And I figured I'd just stay up here and stay out and of that. Fish, like, fish every day. <laughs> fish and run. Fish and run. Hey, um, last bit of memories that we'll we'll go through, and we'll leave you on this little note right here. But do do you remember when you were a young child and you learned the alphabet? Sort of. I think I still know it. Yeah, don't course. tell me to say it. Oh, no, 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 no. We wouldn't I'll do anything that ridiculous somewhere. ever on this show. <laughs> but what we I'm have a new game it. that's called the um, the Aaron Martin's Bass and Life Alphabet Game. Okay. Well, so basically, I am going well, to give you a letter of the alphabet, and you relate that letter of the alphabet to bass fishing and life. For example, if I give you the letter B, bass fishing might be balsa. Life might be babes. Okay, so it's it's bass and life. Are you with me? I think so. Okay, Aaron, let's try this one. The first letter to you of Aaron's bass and alphabet is M. What does M stand for in your alphabet in bass and life? M stands for Maximus? I don't know. Maximus, okay, whatever that is. Major... Major. Major think, Maximus. Uh, Major Maximus. Okay, that's yeah, bass. Yeah, watch him in phases. Yeah. Major, <laughs> there it is, moon phases. <laughs> Major Boom. League Fishing Maximus. <laughs> and yeah. it's important in life yeah. and bass fishing. That's two M's, actually. Yeah. <laughs> How about the letter L? The letter L. Oh, uh, I don't want to say lucky. That's the first thing that pops in my head. Lucky. Fishing's got lucky. some luck involved, a little bit of lucky in there. Fishing's always been known for lucky, but it's not, not lucky where we fish. There it is. And how about life? What does L stand for in life? L? I thought you just, uh, lucky? Lucky. It was life, I don't know. life I, I and you, bass. I thought you just said that. I thought we just did L. We did L, we, but we need bass fishing and life. So in bass fishing, it's luck. Is it oh. luck in life, too? Lure. Lure. Okay. That's good. Oh. G. Whatever. The letter G. G. G-Man? G-Man Swindle. <laughs> <laughs> is that life and fishing yeah fishing what about fishing uh, goby i don't know goby 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 so gerald in life goby <laughs> and fishing <laughs> the letter z did you catch another one aaron the, the letter z yeah <laughs> the letter z z well there's c as in tom no, no. z as in zebra Oh, Z. Z is in uh, Zona. Zona. Oh, Z Zona. Okay. He's big time fishing. He's a big time guy. Yep. And who else? What else? Z. Uh, Z. Z man, but they don't sponsor me. I'm not going to mention them. Yeah, don't even say them <laughs> at all. I know. The final letter of Aaron Martin's Bass and Alphabet is the letter A, Aaron. Bass fishing and life. Aaron. 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 Uh, a. Uh, uh, I'm distracted by all the little fish I'm looking at. Um, A. Let's calculate. A is the tough one, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably the toughest letter if we have to decipher things accurately. Agro. Agro. Agro bass. Yeah, agro bass. Agro bass. Agro vision. Agro. Agro, like agricultural. A A would be a. I don't know. I can't think of one. A. Uh, Astronomical? I don't know. Astronomical is is it. But you know so, what A is to me? A to me is Aaron Martins, the most awesomest professional bass fisherman oh, on the dude, planet right now. On. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Martins. Yes. Dude, thanks so much, man, for taking time uh, out of your practice and hanging out with us knuckleheads, man. We appreciate it, Aaron. You're a good friend. Thanks, Aaron. No problem. I'll be fishing. I'll be fishing 12 minutes or 11 minutes past this time tomorrow. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs>
that's crazy. The sun's setting, and I'll be, I'll be out here fishing still. Oh, there's another spot right there, boys. <laughs> Every time I'm on the big border, I find another one. That's another. Fun. Hey, make sure you watch Aaron Martins as he tries for his repeat victory on Table Rock tomorrow uh, on uh, M- uh, MajorLeagueFishing.com. Watch it live right there. Aaron Martins. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Prime everybody. Time. Take care. Knock him out. Be Good safe. Luck, Aaron. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Aaron Martins. Bye. Kaboom, kaboom. Yeah. <laughs> we love I've Aaron. It's been one of the things I told myself as a young angler. Is, uh, I mean, at bass fishing, I, I, at a young age, when I started, you know, 15 or 13, whenever I started bass fishing, uh, I was always thinking, uh, and I fished on my whole life, saltwater and fresh, but uh, it's hard to keep up with everything. And you think you're going to learn it all. Like at 15, 16, 18, whatever, you know, you think you can learn this sport. And there's too many variables, especially when you travel the country like we do in different areas of the country. But so, all, that, all that matters, I, though, some, Aaron, let me let me just say this. All that seems to matter to you is is Leslie, Jordan, Spencer, and Bass. And, yep. that, and that's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing. That's so great. You seem uh-huh. you almost seem immune to outside forces. It appears that way. Do you guys agree with me? Got a you, force field. Yeah, you, you do have an Aaron Martin's uh, I, force no, field. I, I've been through a lot. I guess I've been through some hard times and good times, and I've been beat up a lot in this sport. You know, some <laughs> of the some, some of the second place classics were tough. And, we heard about those four of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then second places in the in the some of the West Coast big tournaments. It, I mean, I went through a lot of lot of hard moments. You know, a lot of, like that would go on for days too, and. I always tell, t- you know, talk to myself, not out loud, but when you're driving, you always kind of try to tell yourself, there's, you know, it's, it's not just to let it go, basically. And, yeah. uh, you know, learn from your mistakes. And, you know, a lot of times you don't make mistakes and you, you struggle. So it's just part of the sport. It's sports, it's, I, I don't know. I've, I played some sports in, the, in high school and stuff, but it's a hard sport. It's, it's a, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, I don't know. There's a lot of you got your family and then the, the bass part. The bass are really hard to figure out sometimes. <laughs> they <laughs> sure are. <laughs> you don't get a lot of practice now. So, I mean, some of these events, we don't get any practice. So, it's I, I like that part of it. That's what that's what makes, you know, the major league so exciting is the cup events, I think. Because sure. And you, you don't, they, you know, you're not supposed to study the area or nothing. I mean, you're it's off limits. And, and you just, yeah, the cup events. And, uh. And uh, the tour events are similar to that too. It's less practice, and, and it's just—I uh, don't know. It's kind of—it's more fun for me lately. Yeah, I mean, but I, it seems—it seems that like what you just said, you talked to us a little bit about some struggles that you had and oh, some yeah, things that I mean, struggles. you know. But I want to let you know that it doesn't come off that way. You basically do seem immune to struggle. Now, well, my, one of my worst ones, you remember if I was in Pittsburgh, right? When of I had course. lost that two-pound yeah. smallmouth, and yeah. it rolled, it was on the, they didn't see the bass were how close it was to coming in the boat, but it, I literally landed flat on the gunnel. I remember watching it, and there was no time to grab it. I remember watching it, it was either going to slip into the boat or slip out of the boat. It was my biggest fish I hooked all week, last day, hour left. And I had that little short in the boat. I was afraid to wait. You know, I ended up throwing that short back, and I lost by about four ounces. So I, that, I remember that seeing time, you though, collapse. I knew, I, knew, I knew I had that two- I knew when I had that two pounder, I knew that was a classic and I didn't give up, but it was that, it was that, I mean, I didn't do that on purpose. It was this agony. <laughs> and after that tournament, after I threw back the keeper, that was probably a keeper that I could have weighed in. I ended up not taking the chance as a one pound penalty. I, I didn't know what the other guy had, Kevin. So I ended up t- tossing him when it was on the line. And then now, I, you know, after that, I was like, I should have weighed in, of course. Right. Like, I wow. lost by a few ounces. So that, that was kind of a, that lasted like a few days. I mean, that, yeah, I pray about it, and I you know, I try to be positive, but it's almost no way to make the pain go away for days. You know, that's a that's a hard thing to tell. It's like what five hundred grand that one. Yeah, the money was yeah. big. I got fifty and, grand in a classic. I, I mean, just, <laughs> a classic victory. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's and I caught him so good in that one. It's just it was it was a tough one. But I, there's a lot of those that even you end up in the top ten, not even close to like really to winning it, but you're actually you were really close to winning it, and 
you know, you made a made a mistake or didn't go somewhere you should have. There's just lots of fishing's all about that. But here's what I'm saying: I've seen all this. We've seen that happen, especially That's the classics. That's how I've learned, though. That's how I've learned. That's how the next season you bounce back. You, it seems yeah. like you give zero f's. Boom, you're <laughs> back. You're back bass fishing. I, I turn it. I turn it into to uh, productiveness. I guess. <laughs> Ex- I do. Thank I do. you. I torture myself for like days, even weeks later. I'll think about it, and then. I'll think about what I did wrong, and then I, I turn it into like acceleration instead of deceleration, kind of a positive. Now, ha- has it always been like that, Aaron? Or, or I mean, back I, in I the early struggled. days, was it harder yeah. to, to recover? And then you learned something along the way on how to shed it. I don't know. I, I've always been real super competitive, so I'd, I get mad. And I, when I was younger, I probably wasn't as cool as I am now. I probably got hotter under the collar but <laughs> i think most young guys do that it's, that's normal um it's such a competitive sport and if you're competitive it's uh you know you you beat yourself up. But i never really picked out anybody else but myself that's kind of and now that i have a family i almost feel worse now that I, when i do bad or something fails like that or like the angry year when that 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 one i had to fish to win the tournament at the st lawrence and i sheared some bolts off my jack plate that was mm. That was a bad one, and and I let my you know I got AOI the day before, and I I would have won that one. And <laughs> yeah, that was that was hard to take, but it was uh, kind of sort of out of my hands. Um, so I mean, I don't, I'm just I, I like I said I don't take it out on anybody else but myself, and and that's how I've kind of taught myself to to let it roll. Like nowadays, something happens, I don't think I react at all hardly, just because I've already been there and done that, and so there's no reason to. to I guess waste of energy doing it, uh, doing that. I said, I fell on my back in Pittsburgh. That was hard to stop. That, I mean, <laughs> and, and a, lot, a lot of history with you, Aaron. I mean, and now you're in in the Bass Pro Tour, and you're doing the life of Aaron Martin's way back, way back in the history. The virgin Aaron Martin's, the virgin to bass fishing, the new horizon. Okay. So what uh, I want to ask you is I want you to delve back and think about the first lure that you fell in love with, Aaron. What was the first lure you fell in love with? Oh, my gosh. What was it? She was. See, I was a big-time trout fisherman before I bass fish. I had, like, many days trout fishing in the Sierras. And, and lo- local lakes in California are really good for trout fishing. But the Sierras were fantastic. So I, I, for bass... If I remember right, oh man, uh, I really, the first lake I started fishing was Lake Piru and a, and a new Ranger boat back then, a 363, which is a tiny little thing. And I had my, uh, a few tackles, a few, a little bit of bass tackle. And I think one of the first things I, cause it was Lake Piru and it was probably, I remember being pretty warm. I think it was like a, believe it or not, I think it was a Rebel Popar. That Rebel my Popper. First, oh. My first favorite, like, bait, because it was it worked really good there, and it was so much fun. And I, and I ended up getting a lot of fish on it the first year I was in my boat. So it was actually me and my mom's boat. But we, uh, the Popper, I remember that. Well, that's for, that was one of my next questions. That's the first boat? Was that the first boat that was actually yours to use on your own? Well, I, my mom, actually, my mom and dad, kind of, I was 15 when we got that boat, and... I didn't want. To, I don't know why I didn't want to wait for a 361 back then. If you guys know the older Rangers, the 361 was a single console, kind of the big deck on it. Yeah. I love that boat. But I had a. I ended up getting a 363, and uh, and eventually ended up helping my mom pay for it because we actually within a year we started fishing like team tournaments and stuff and yeah. club tournaments and actually we won quite a bit of money enough to actually pay for our boat. <laughs> so that my you know I, I saved enough money to buy tackle. And I worked too back then, so I, I worked a job and I. And I, uh, we fished as many tournaments as we could, so I actually was doing probably pretty good for a 15 to 16-year-old. You know you know what's amazing about you, Aaron, is you – I want Ryan Whitaker to witness this, that Aaron actually answered every one of my questions <laughs> without me even asking them right there. He went through the boat. He went through the money. He went through the lure. Yep. The only thing that you didn't answer is I want to know from you about what point or what time frame in your life did you first – become woke you realized that you <laughs> were a professional bass fisherman oh boy was uh, it? i was probably 21 um i still worked i still worked a job but uh 
But uh, it was always a dream as a young kid. The, once I started bass fishing, probably from about 15 years and up, I really wanted to do it. And I watched Bassmasters on TV back then, you know, Bill Dance and Jimmy Houston sure. shows. And, uh, and Jerry McGinnis. I, I, I watched a lot of fishing shows, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something with that. Uh, at first, I kind of still wanted to be a saltwater captain. I think I've told you that before. I was, yes, you did. I was, a, I was a salty, and I still I love saltwater fishing. I actually wanted to get a boat someday, and a big boat, and charter it. But I got into the sport of bass fishing and the tournaments, and eventually I, that kind of disappeared into straight into all, all I want to do is bass fish. <laughs> And I had different jobs growing up, but all I wanted to do is bass fish. So a lot of the jobs I did get, I got because i go to work early and get off early. And in California, you know, you'd half hour drive to the lake, so you'd get four or five hours in a day. So I'd work, probably fish five days a week in those early early years. And by the time I was 21, I actually still worked. I remember telling my boss I needed this week off, and, and he was really cool. His name was Sam, Sam something. It was a Unical gas station at the time, and I worked early shifts, so... I told him I was going. I ended up winning that tournament. I was 21. Nice. And it was a fully rigged bass boat, a ranger boat with a Mercury on it. It was probably worth like 35 grand. And uh, <laughs> that's about as much as I made. <laughs> that was year. awesome. So, <laughs> so I, I, I figured I had I had a time to, it was time to, you know, start fishing more of the pro events. And, and I, I started fishing West Coast bass and English choice and like a Wallen bass tournament. So there's a lot of money to be made out there. And it's like, make a long story short, so 21 is where I felt like I was actually a, a, a touring pro, even though I hadn't come back east yet. Okay. Uh, I had I had for a few championships at the Red River, and I had been to Arkansas and stuff for some stuff. But I was still in California, Southern Cal, uh, San Fernando Valley. So I, that point is when I, I actually got, came back and told my boss, I told him I was uh, I was quitting. What were you Maybe, doing? So, what was your job? I was a full a full serve Unical gas station at the time. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, I, okay. in the valley, in, in your boss in the, Sam. Okay, I get it. West Valley, west side of the valley by Calabasas, in between Calabasas and Chatsworth, West Hills. I was kind of a, a well known gas station. <laughs> well, how did how did that happen? Like, how did Aaron's magic happen? I don't know. It was. Uh, I mean, I helped develop it, but uh, Mike Brakebill is the color master. Over you there, just put a bunch of baits and they bled together, and you're like, no, I, I, really I, remember, I, remember, I remember asking him for like a green and a blue and a, like brown. I remember he. But he, I remember the first ones came out almost like teal, like they were weird looking. And I, I remember, I mean, really, Mike, he's got a good eye. I'm colorblind, so he, it's hard to explain what I want to see really? and what comes out because I'm colorblind. But he's, we work together. So well. is Ryan. Ryan's yeah, colorblind too. too. Red, red, blue, green. Like I can't see shades of red. My wife just had her hair like really awesome hair job today and had it colored a little bit, and I can't. Let's see it, like, Leslie. Come on the camera. Let's see your wow. hair. Hey Leslie, you around? Let's see Leslie's hair. Where she's at? God, I love that you're colorblind. I'm a hair guy. I got oh, hope. I didn't notice it right away. I'm so bad because I can't see. They want to see but, your hair. Shh, don't tell me. I told me you got your hair done like don't it was like don't tell years ago. Shh, let me see. Shh. That's good. Here comes good. She's wearing sweat. That's all right. So, so. There she is. Hey, Leslie, your hair looks amazing. Did you just get it done? Your hair looks amazing. <laughs> you just get it done. Your, your hair yeah. looks amazing. You just got it done? Yeah, I, I cried at the in the seat. This is the first time I, I ever. Had I I noticed right away. Aaron didn't even notice, but as soon as you got, <laughs> I, got I noticed immediately. Yeah, my truck broke down at the park and went for a five mile run. It wouldn't start. He can't see red. And then, and then I, and she came down there and tried to jump it. It wouldn't jump, so I had my mechanic come down there. And Leslie, I, all that, all that. Yeah. he's fooling you. Good. He can see red. Like when we were yeah. in in the Bassmaster Classic in his boat, he had fifteen red crankbaits in the <laughs> rod locker, and he knew they were red. Yeah, because I told him. It said it on the package. <laughs> I, saw, I send her pictures of dates sometimes. Work. I'll be like, what color is it? <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> but you look amazing, as usual, Leslie. Thank you. And the boot camp is doing you well. I will not mess with you. You are a force to be reckoned <laughs> with. Oh, yeah. It says your wife's an animal. You just tell, tell them me. everything? Yeah. yeah. Well, you want to know. It's my <laughs> buddy. <laughs> yeah. I knew where you guys had your first kiss. It was magical. <laughs> it was <laughs> magical. That 7-Eleven will never be the same. 22nd anniversary, yeah, uh, that's the seventh. It was outside the Circle K. 22, 22 <laughs> years. Where's your thing at? 22 years. I have now. it. Married 22 years now. That's pretty good. And and how how old are Jordan and Spencer? 16 and 12. Wow. Driving. Crazy. She's pretty, she's pretty good. She's and who's who's most like you, Aaron? And who's most like Leslie? Jordan. Jordan uh, is a lot yeah. like me. Yeah, probably Jordan's a lot like me in some ways. She likes to draw and and she doesn't like fishing as much as I do, but she loves to like draw. And she loves outdoors. And outdoors, she loves hunting and she does like fishing, but she likes hunting better than fishing. Which really? Is weird. 
Mm-hmm. Interesting. Have you ever brought her bow hunting? Oh, she's got a bow. One of my friends gave him her this older, but it's a nice Not bow. Not yet. Okay. But she's been shooting a target in the backyard, yeah. So she, next year, possibly, she might go for a bow trip. But I want to go, like, if I'm going to go hunt, I don't hunt. I like to shoot guns <laughs> in the woods illegally sometimes. But <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I, I really don't. Like every state? And that's not good. Is it gun? It's kind of like uh, they let you have guns there? We just go know? in the alleys in Chicago and shoot them. But it's no, no. I live in Indiana. I'm away. I'm away from that. But shoot them in basements. Yeah, we do. But never mind. But see, but I think that we should bring back natural hunting, like you, where it's just man and a weapon, like a knife or a, a, a bl- like a sharp stick, and you have to. Rope. Yeah, you got to catch that animal. You, a lot of times they snare and trap animals. Yes, yeah, snare things. them, trap them, and then yeah. stab them. It's like you, you jump on their back. <laughs> Goodbye, hey, Joe, animal. Joe Flindle did that. Did uh, he ever tell you? No. Sure. Oh, you that, should yeah. call him and get his story. He told an awful story at dinner one time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> tell That's us how it. he killed a deer. Leslie, tell us. No, I don't remember all of that. I was horrified. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did it make you not hungry? Uh, I don't know. He said he jumped on it, stabbed it, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll ask him next time. <laughs> Sounds like we gotta him. get that story. <laughs> Sounds like somebody got some anger issues. <laughs> 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 but no, wouldn't that be fun? Natural hunting. Yeah. No. No. Dangerous, man. like pig and stuff. Something that can really hurt you. I think you mean primi- like- primitive. Hunting. <laughs> yeah. Alligators. He said, "What do you say, pagan?" <laughs> Alligators. So yeah, him. You have to hit him like in the eyeball because they wouldn't hit. It just deflect off their head. You yeah, or pick. put your thumb right in a great white's eye. Cause that'll stop them. <laughs> no, they have eyelids, man, to protect against that. Well, no, and I Gray heard whites do. I heard when I was getting attacked by a shark. If you I, watch Shark Week? I was on Shark Week as Manny once. <laughs> you put your eye, your thumb in the in the shark's eye. It's a true story, and you punch it in the nose. It bites you in half. Yeah, but it'll, you'll be dead by then. So it, it never work. works. They close their eyes during attacks. <laughs> so, so Leslie, how often do you go fishing with Aaron? Oh, right. Hardly he ever. He did go. We went yeah. To, uh, to uh, Green Bay. He doesn't let yeah. you or you don't want to go? No, just no time. I try to get her to go sometimes when it's good. I just don't have time. If we're like away, you know, camping and we have time, I'll go. But, I enjoy it. But being a bass and wife ain't easy, is it? I mean, no. that's, I mean I'm mean, i being serious. It's a lot of work for you. You do a lot of work, yeah. Leslie. Yeah, she raises the kids. Well, I was talking to time. Leslie, Aaron. I know the kids. It's a lot of work. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> so what? I mean, besides the kids, there's the business end. Yeah, there's lots. She does a lot. Do you yeah. want to answer? Because she knows she. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do all the boring stuff. Stuff he doesn't want to uh, do. You know. So <laughs> well, what you is make the all boring? His food. What's the boring? Uh, just stuff? all the communications, accounting, contracts, all that kind of uh, stuff. The, the oh. calendar, that calendar thing. That you're supposed to do this on certain dates. I don't like that. Yeah, either. scheduling. He doesn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> The be here cam- then. The that be here then thing. Campground reservations for the year. It's it's a lot of work. Social yeah. media. Social media. She does a lot of that. Yeah, I try to help him stay on top of that. All that stuff. Yeah. Well, you're a busy wow. woman. And very t- busy. Together, you guys are an amazing bass fishing couple, and I mean that sincerely. You you you. you guys are freaking yeah. cool. I'm just saying. Just saying. It's straight up. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome, man. And, Thank you. And um and the happiness seems to show. It really does with your entire yeah. family. I, I don't know if you heard. Oh, yeah, they're they're tough at times, but they're at the age. We kind of, <laughs> they're teenagers. Kind of expect it because we can still remember what we we're like at that age. So we're like, okay, I, I remember doing that. <laughs> but I, Leslie, I don't know if you caught any of the beginning of the show, but I told Aaron that he seemed to be impervious to outside forces and all that mattered to him were you the kids and bass that's what made it that's what made it easier yeah <laughs> sometimes you like i said you, you haunt yourself for for certain things but can't think about it but that's the yeah easiest way to he's pretty good about, about shutting stuff out he just doesn't yeah i got family it doesn't affect him directly he's not I watch, worry the, about I watch it. the news i watch what some people go through uh especially military and stuff that's when you think about what I've gone through, like what happens and what some other people go through, whatever, that's it. makes that's problems small, don't it? Makes yeah. Problem, yeah. Some of my problems, like non existent. Exactly. I, I, I actually, actually count my blessings often. And, and it, as, as weird as it may sound, sometimes that brings out in us when we have to realize that, like, man, that's, that's a lot worse than what I got going on. A lot on. worse. You know, a lot, a lot, yeah. So it makes you feel like, you know, I feel very fortunate. Got a healthy family, and and I just pray for everybody else to 
Yeah, I, I, I meet a lot of people over the years, a lot of the, the veterans and the, and the and, you know, guys who have been injured you know, permanently. It's, I have friends that have been in accidents. It's like they have it way worse. And, and and again, I just man, lost a pass or made a bad decision. <laughs> I get mad at that, but that helps me get over things much quicker. Is it? It's really not that. It's not a big deal. It's 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 the turn of it's a, just a what do they call it? The, the flick of a switch or the snap of of your fingers that things change. And mm-hmm. we we've we've all done dumb things in our lives. We we've had, and we're all fortunate that we've gotten through through stupid situations, maybe bad decisions we've made. But th- the fact of the matter is, we always have to realize where we are and how fortunate we are and and the fact that that this whole bass fishing community is so tight it's it's a pretty neat family it it really is i don't know if there's like i'm not involved in uh maybe professional football players lives or whatever but it just seems that as bass fishermen there's a lot of of uniting that happens but now it's a, whole, it's a wholesome sport. Yeah, it's, it, it's a wholesome it is. It is. Sport. But, but here's what I want to bring it to. And I, I kind of I'm glad that, that Leslie's here, too. And 2019 was a was a, a, a weird year for bass fishing. Very weird. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, you came out very well. You're doing good. You love to fish. You're going to do good wherever you fish. But there was a lot of division, Aaron. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what I don't like, Leslie. I don't like the division in the sport. I don't either. But anytime there's big change that comes to anything, people are going to fight it. Sure, of course, right? It, it, whatever history of religion, history of politics, it's all the right. same. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 the people are going to fight it. But what I just want to see is all my heroes getting along and happy again. You know what I mean? That's yeah. These, these guys like I mean, as weird as it, it, it we're fanboys, okay? We're fans of the sport of bass fishing, all right? And it and it yeah. hurts us when they when our heroes collide, if yeah. that makes sense. Aaron, yeah. I'm glad you're not one of the colliders. That's all. I'm sure. No, <laughs> I'm glad you're not. <laughs> you know, uh, collider. Hey, can you can you guys uh, just put your heads together for one second? Just put. Okay, I just wanted to get that screenshot. There it is. Boom, we got it. Because I made a heart. Yes, it was amazing. <laughs> so we'll get that to you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, <laughs> Bass Fishing Galaxy, that's Leslie Martins and Aaron Martins, and thank you so much. We, we had an amazing time with awesome. you. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. So, Always a good time. Thank you. So you said, you told me on the phone yesterday you want to come on every other show, right, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm able to do it that much. <laughs> well, that's what you said. I didn't make that up. You said it. Uh, you, you can pretty much call me anytime. You, you surprise me sometimes. <laughs> like the sooner I thought you might call me, or sometimes later, and you call me. Like this time, it seemed like later, but probably wasn't. No, we we do no. we about every eight months. Yeah, you do. Now, I, it's yeah. like I'm like the Jimmy Kimmel show, you know, or or Fallon. I do my rotation of superstars at all time. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm. Do- so Leslie, did you like the um? Did you like the uh, uh, Griswold picture that Andy made for you? William Wallace. <laughs> yeah, that one was. <laughs> That one was strange. <laughs> that one at some point. You know, it is that movie's 30th anniversary this year. So is that right? Uh-huh. Everybody needs to watch it. Yeah. There it is. Christmas vacation. I don't need an excuse. I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And, Christmas. and the best to yep. you and all your family. Merry Christmas. Thanks for Happy having New us. Year, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you. Thank you, guys. Leslie and Aaron Martins right there. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and all, my, all my sponsors are great, but. I mean, Sims has been incredible, and they make they get better and better every year. I mean, it's just I have great sponsors. I'm with my sponsors, like I said, the Shimano, uh, because I like the product. I'm not with them because they pay me. Dude, I'm, it, I'm looking. I'm, I'm, I've been like that like that my whole career, except for Crown Royal. I don't drink Crown Royal. I never did. <laughs> well, the goal is <laughs> it's a cool bag. The, the goal though. is to um, yeah, one bottle. And it's, hey, let's see, hand that to me. It's right there. I got one bottle. I still have it. Look at this bottle of Crown Royal. Let me show them the hat too. Here it is. Like it. <laughs> 2001 angler year aaron martins nice <laughs> that's that's a big deal yeah. right there yeah, it's full never been open wow that's that's a that's, a, that's, a, that's a big deal dude i still have stuff i still have i still have a lot I have a, I have a museum at my house you guys uh i have millions dr- of dollars drink that. millions of dollars i got a lot of collectible stuff but here's a old kind of anybody want that one <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> Dude. You know, you know how hard that is to keep when people are trying to steal your truck and stuff for your stuff that's in it? <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, that's, that's a that was a popular hat. That's, awesome. that's a straight up. Hat. That definitely is a straight, <laughs> straight up collectors. Like you get, you gotta get ready now. <laughs> you ready? Rapid oh, fire. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's do it. The first word is flipping. Word is fast. Huh? Fast. 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 Flipping is fast. Favorite way, favorite way of flipping. Fast. Okay. Uh, Zona. Oh, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> different. 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 He's different. I love, I love Zona. Yeah. But he's definitely, like you and me, he's different. I mean, there's people that are kind of, everybody's different, but he's different. Yeah. Uh, You're I'm, different. Uh, uh, yeah. I know, I know I'm different. Yeah. But there's other people that are just different. We're different, different. I get it. Thanks. Not me and two. This is kind of weird. No, no. <laughs> it's, he, Z is different as well. 100%. 100%. Oh, yeah, he is. I fished him a lot. He's, I love Zona. Aaron, most people that you and I associate with are different. If that, <laughs> if they, you know, on a personal level. So you that's, hear that, Hammers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Margarita Mutilator, Morning Dawn, Aaron's Magic. Oh, you ruined it with the last one. He had to do that. Why? Good color, great colors. That's it. Oh, because he had a good afternoon deal going there, and he kind of messed up with Aaron's magic. That's a more morning deal. That's fine. <laughs> that's a morning deal. <laughs> <laughs> you get that out of it. That is. Oh, that's awesome, man. I messed right, up. Remember that Margarita's midday, and Aaron's magic's in the morning of it's cloudy and rainy out. Aaron's magic's really good. Way that's go, why man. you're smart. Like who the hell shed. else yeah, would no just one tell me that I messed that. up because I messed a progression <laughs> of colors <laughs> o- it, according to daytime? <laughs> wow, <laughs> you're nuts, dude. You're freaking insane. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> why did you like tell me about those names? Like, what's the uh, name? Aaron's magic's just a really good. It's air. It's watermelon. Brown and blue, which is a color we worked with. Uh, it was a weird. I could I could probably find the worm that Aaron's magic came from in my garage. I have robeworms that are original from in the, the museum. Beginning. You mean in the soon come museum that Brandon original Palenix original robeworms are. Here's a pack right here. The original robeworms are perfect. Palenix, I mean, here's, look at this. Here's an here's an injection pad. These are old. Wow. I got I got thousands of pounds of those. Anybody want to burn them? Yeah. I, don't, I use all new stuff. But I got tons of them. But um. What was the question on the robo, the color? Ah, uh, you the... threw me. Uh, no, I want to know where you get like these are cool names. Like, the, are these your? Oh, names? the colors. Yeah, uh, Marguerite. Are morning... Okay, Marguerite. Aaron's Magic's water. Yeah, it's a. It was a color. It came from like a teal worm that was like a really light kind of a teal blue. And I had we had dark. I was like darken that blue a little bit, and that green. The green needs to be like much darker. And then that's like you know the brown strip. Make a brown strip in the belly. And he kind of Mike over at Roboworm's a genius. So I could just say stuff like I just said to him. He'd be like. Like hours or days later, he'd send me a box with like a thousand of them. Say, try this one. I'm like, whoa, like a box. I don't, I, throw, <laughs> I don't have any cardboard in my garage, but he is amazing. So Aaron's Magic ended up being a really good color. And that's actually a, one of my favorite crank colors I have right here. Oh, it's not here. But uh, you, yeah, you got the jerk bait in that too. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That, they're, that Aaron's Magic and the, and the, their crank bait. That's my favorite color right now. Uh, I hooked my biggest fish at Logan Martin. It was the first bite I had, had on that, that lure, the A11. That's by Rialis. I hooked it like a nine pounder. My first bite, my second cast with the Aaron's Magic Color at Logan Martin. When I got the one they were going to, they wanted me to try, it was like a nine pounder at Logan Martin. I had it right to the boat on the on that plug I showed you on, on a different one, but that exact plug. And I was trying to grab a nine pounder at Logan Martin with a new, brand new bait and a new color, and the fish came off. It was nine pounds. It was the big. <laughs> It's my biggest Logan Martin bass ever. I had my hands on it. But that color is really good, low light. And then the margarita is like a purple. It's got silver flake in it, you know, a little bit of brown in it on the belly. And that's a really good, like really high sun. It's got like kind of a neon effect to it, like a fluorescent when it's in the water, it kind of glows. But actually those colors in work better in really bright sun. So whenever that bait is the most obnoxious, when it looks like it's oh, it's way too bright, that's when it works the best. So really clear water, neon fish react really well to it. Even pressured bass react well to it. And you so Morning them. Dawn's similar to that. Same kind of effect. It's, you know, it looks like it's really visible, but not, it's a different effect though. It's more of a, it's much more subtle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it is. It, it's a, mm-hmm. 
Oh, and you are you responsible for the names of them? That's like, is that like your deal? But, uh, not really. I, Aaron's Magic. I probably this is a color we worked on. Is one of my colors, but a lot of them are like the Aaron's Pro Magic. It's got like a pro belly on it. It's, I helped with a lot of the, Mike Brails, the one that put them together. And that's that takes some talent. He has good eyes. I mean, I like I said, I'm colorblind. I couldn't make color because colors like that it would be a hard for it's, me. It's but insane could. those colors, man. That that you guys can. I mean, they're used. I mean, Berkeley's using them. Uh, Zoom's using a lot of them, the prison shads, and they've copied a, a lot of Robo stuff. And the prism shads are incredible. I've been using those for 20 years, and it's got like a really bright, like so really cloudy conditions. Like right now, we have these this tropical storm coming over us, rain outside, it's dark. If I was going to throw a shaky hair drop shot, I'd use like a prism shad or a prism crawl, which has got a ton of neon and it. it picks up what little lights goes into the water, it picks up really bright at the bottom as a silver kind of flash. Or black. I mean, so now just, you're telling me color matters. See, because before it, it does. It's uh, I mean, you could like you see, you could use black and catch fish anywhere you go. Okay. Black is like to me. I had robot worm pour me a thousand black worms of each size, and I used almost all of them. I mean, black to me is awesome, but there are times when black, you know, a prism shed will we're out fish black. And it's, it's the bright, shade. It's, it's the shade it's like of they're, it. They're wanting something flashy. I get it. So there's <laughs> times when they want something sparkly. Like right now, you they get into a time of year where you want something flashy. Because of the bait. You need a reaction. Yeah, it's a shad or eating a lot. Mostly shad this time of year. Hey, what's your uh, your bucket list fish? Hmm. Bucket list fish. I haven't. All the tuna I've caught, I still haven't not caught a bluefin. I've been fishing for them a lot. I grew up on the West Coast. Now everybody's catching them out there, but it wasn't like that when I grew up. So I'd have to say probably a, a big bluefin. A big bluefin. That would be cool. Yeah, six, like six, maybe. Eight hundred pound. Maybe like on uh, on a metanium and you and, you, oh, and, and, and yeah and you're just slide you're skiing it yeah you you're, 20, you're, 20 pound braid <laughs> you're just twenty he only said twenty see that's how crazy Aaron is that, that's how crazy he is hey, I when, use a lot of twenty when I say the three words Brian the carpenter what what do <laughs> you think of? yeah Brian, Brian the carpenter what do you think of thrift. <laughs> the Bri Brian the Carpenter, for, you know, Ike Live, amazing producer. Brian the Carpenter. Oh yeah, Carpenter. Brian. I was good at Brian. I, well, I was thinking maybe yeah, Thrift is a carpenter or something. No, not on the side. He is. What is uh, this? Know, He's a bad you know guy. Huh? I just showing you some old stuff. Dude, Remember is that, that pork? <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. I got, I got, I got so much of it. Don't rob my house. I got security and and. <laughs> he just had like a bulk supply of pork. No, that was like a one twentieth of it. I got like a whole rack of it. <laughs> one oh one, eleven. <laughs> He's freaking out. Jumbo. Wow. Old Hank Parker. Ladies so and got... gentlemen, welcome to Aaron Martin's House of Lures. <laughs> Boys and girls, men and women, children of all ages, welcome to Aaron's Lure Museum. And if you wait any longer, I'm about to start eating pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, just do it, man. Like, it's uh, it's yeah, so yeah. Start, start eating. Oh, man. I, ate, I ate a bunch before this. <laughs> <laughs> 6,000 calories a day is a lot. Hey, um, who's your favorite actor? Oh, gosh. Uh, Dwayne. Is it Dwayne from uh, Jumanji? The Rock? Oh, The Rock. The Rock. I like The Rock. Yeah, Dwayne The Rock. I, I mean, I, I got, I mean, I, I've told you before. I got, I mean, I got to meet Mel Gibson and talk to him for an hour, sat down right next to him, talked to him. He's really no, cool. No, 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 no. You and I, like, I like all the other, I mean, you, you didn't got me tell us. Part. Stop, Aaron, stop, yeah. stop. You, but Dwayne, you yeah. He's wait a minute. Aaron Martins, hold on a second. Hold on. You did, you told me before that you liked Mel Gibson a lot. You didn't yeah, tell me you hung out with yeah. him. Tell me about but, that. My present favorite actor would probably be uh, The Rock, just because he's, I mean, he's just, where's he's Leslie? Awesome actor. He's, he's funny, he makes me laugh, and he's badass. <laughs> Aaron, tell us about meeting Mel Gibson. Aaron, tell us about meeting Mel Gibson. Ryan, uh, ask him again. Uh, <laughs> tell us about meeting I, Mel Gibson. Yes, please. I, Andy, girl, ask I him. A long time ago, taught his kids acting, and I got to meet a couple actors, but he was my favorite. And, uh, he was, she was teaching his kids, so I sat down, and Mel Gibson comes in the room and sits right next to me. There's like five chairs. I'm like, I'm like, hey, Mel. <laughs> 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 so I, my wife, my, my, back then, I knew she was teaching his kids, so he was real nice. We talked the whole time she was teaching. She was over in another room, so we just talked the whole time. Like about what? Like what are you like talking with Mel Gibson I think, I think about. if I'm not mistaken, it was one of the, maybe Braveheart, or it was one of those movies where he has hair grown out. He's 
Okay. Yeah. Kind of like had the part, had a beard. But he was really, uh, really cool. His, I mean, I don't know. I, I heard he's kind of out there, but <laughs> I always awesome. liked him. Yeah. No. No. But I like. No. There's a lot of actors I like. That's this. Uh. The, but The Rock is probably like he's just all around. I think one of the cooler actors. He seems like a good guy, and he's big, and he's he funny. He's funny. Too. Being big and funny like that, playing the Twinkle Fairy. What was he? A Tooth Fairy. <laughs> Being a big dude like that, and a big fairy, funny tooth fairy who bass fishes, right? You know, Jumanji, yeah, Jumanji, Jumanji. That was a good movie. <laughs> the Rock, I mean, all his movies are actually pretty good, but yeah. Hey, when uh, when I say Lake uh, Castaic, what do you think of Castaic? What do Stripers you think? ruined it. Stripers ruined it. That's what your thoughts are. Mm-hmm. Wow, it was the best lake in the world for about ten years, and then the Stripers got in it, ruined it. They just ate up all the bait and, and, and it got too competitive? They ate the acres and acres schools of bluegill up that were in 300 feet of water that were like 90 feet deep, 30 feet to 90 feet deep, thick bluegill schools that were the size of football fields all over the lake. Bluegill, that's the size of your hand, bluegills, brim. Wow. And crappie schools that were the size of like small schools. I mean, this is like amazing fishery. And then the stripers just and within five years destroyed. The, I saw a bunch of little ones come in through the aqueduct. And after that, it was lights out. Completely went down the tubes. So that's why I hate stripers so much. They're evil. Wow. Sorry. Okay. Bad. They're evil in freshwater. They're fine in saltwater. They, they need to stay there. They need to stay in their <laughs> natural habitat. So Castaic is not anywhere. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's ruined. I mean, a 10, 11 pound bag a lot of times wins. It used to take 40, 50 pound bags. So obviously, it's not like it used to be. Hey, I when mean, we... I had big fish in tournaments when me and my wife fished it, a lot of times we're 16 pounders for big fish. Oh. 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 That's big fish. What's big fish today? 15 yeah. and a half. I'm like, oh, I got 12. Uh, oh, you know, I don't wait in. You, you got to have a 13 to get big fish in this one. Five big fish. That's how it was back then. <laughs> don't weigh in a 13 or a That's 12. how it was back then growing wow. up. It was amazing. But then the stripers got into one lake, and then the Casitas was the other girl, the other one. That used to have just massive oh, amounts of pounders in it. Yeah, that's where um, Ray, Easley. Ray Easley. Remember the, um, remember the fish yeah. he caught on the crawdad when we were kids? Yeah. But I used to catch them like that myself on big baits, and it's amazing. I catch, you know, I you know, catch. Uh, I was upset if I didn't catch one over eleven or twelve in a day. Like if I didn't catch a, like a giant every day, I'd be like, oh man, that stinks. I mean, that was like back here. It's like I just want to catch a two pounder on Logan Martin. But back then, if I didn't catch eleven or twelve, I was like, yeah, it was an okay day. <laughs> if I didn't, I mean, catch- every day you went fishing back then, I would catch two or three of them over ten. Dude, that's I grew, sick. I grew, I grew up catching ten pounders, and sometimes I would catch ten in a day. I mean. The fishing was like, I can't, I tell my friends, they don't understand how good it was growing up. Like it was, I thought that's how fishing was. And I come out here and, oh, and then I hit Falcon. I was like, well, that's more like it. That Falcon term we had, that's kind of how Casita's yeah. steak was. Yeah. But then that's not good anymore either. So I don't know. Our <laughs> 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 lakes, our <laughs> lakes, uh, what's the word? Cyclical? Cyclic, 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 little, are they are they cyclic? Cyclic, yeah, are no, not cyclic? sickly, but are do they go through cycles? Is what I'm trying cycles. to say. Uh, yeah, it's probably, silly. It's a, it's not the natural cycle. It's a it's a forced cycle. I'll say. And you know, you, see, you hear people say that, it's, but it's it's human related. I think. Okay, so most it's not, a, it's not a natural cycle. We, these fish go through on, in our, in these lakes. Not at all. Lakes go through pressure. Like Lake Logan Martin's gotten destroyed the last couple of years by tournaments. But then it gets tough, and then. This lake over here has been really good lately. It's and they had to kind of hit that lake for a while, and then Logan Martin creased back up again. So it's an unnatural cycle, and I'm right about that. I've been staying my whole life. <laughs> so it's pressure and lots of tournaments, and just people fishing a certain lake that gets really good, and then you leave it alone for a while. That's the fish kind of recuperate, and then all the pressure goes to this place, and then it kind of goes in, this, and it kind of comes back. Logan, you know, Gunnersville does that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chickamauga does that. All the lakes do that. Over the years, I've Saint noticed Clair, that. St. Clair, all that. Yeah. All that. Yeah, yeah but yeah. then uh, now, as soon as the lake gets hot, social media ruins it. Oh, oh it ruins it even faster like than ever. You're exactly done. right. Yeah, they, there's, a lot the of, uh, there's a lot of pirates. That's that. That's for mm-hmm. sure. So that's just a pressure. Pressure on the lakes. You get, you get tons of it, man. But hey, you know what? I mean, um, that's all part of... Uh, of um, our sport. Of that's, our that's, sport, that's, man. That's, it's that's like, it. It's like it's I, told, I tell my wife it makes it harder for everybody. It makes it better for me because I can catch them better than most people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that take heed. Aaron Martins is here. <laughs> hey, uh, who is the best salesman ever in, pro- oh, in professional bass fishing? Best salesman in professional bass fishing? Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam. Yeah. Okay. I, I I see that. Is there is there? Yeah. I don't know of anybody better. Him or Bill Dance. Yep. 
Bill, Bill's the OG, and then uh, Kevin, even Kevin's. I mean, I love Bill Dance, but even Kevin's got that sharpness to him. He least, sure does. Yeah. 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 He's uh, mm -hmm. he's appealing to the masses. You know what I mean? So he can. Yeah. He is a very good uh, fishing. He looks good. He pronounces as well speaks really well and he's sharp he says is thought of and he doesn't speak slow which i like he's fast like he talks in it continuously he doesn't like hesitate and stuff kind of like me <laughs> yeah, right on fluid <laughs> super fluid did, did kevin tell you about his country and western album he's recording you've been talking what? to him. yeah he didn't tell you no Damn. i know he likes metallica well yeah but ask him when you talk to him like when he calls in the next couple of days ask him about the country and western he's doing all metallica songs but country and western and he, he's singing them i never heard he never said nothing about that to me yeah ask ask him Z, like z's helping him <laughs> yeah yeah They're, oh wait and jay kumar's playing guitar I here play banjo that's version. kumar on guitar you hear kumar He's trying to, yeah, he, like yeah. He's Kumar's yeah. trying to country it up for Kevin, is what he's doing. <laughs> that was Enter Sandman, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was Enter Night Exit Light by the Metallicas. Enter Night Exit Light <laughs> by the Metallicas. Off yeah, the Never wins. I wore a Metallica out when they came out. Wow. Heck I, yeah, actually, dude. That's, that's when me and my wife went to uh, the concert. She got us tickets and surprised me if it was like a present. Really? Metallica nice. concert in Birmingham. She got me tickets. Got us tickets. We Leslie's awesome. awesome. She's the best. You know what? One of my favorite Metallica songs of Wolf and Man. That's like for oh, bass fishermen, that's right? A good one. I can't remember the name of my favorite one. It's, uh, it's the, the one that's military. The guy's got his hands missing, head, or uh, what's that one called? That's called One. I got a lot. Of, one? What is it? Yeah, it's One. One, one yeah. Yeah. I'm Guitar scene and all that. Yeah, it's good. They're awesome, though. I know that. They're good in concert. Andy's got it right there. There's one. Yeah, that's good. I like, I like them all, really. I still listen to them a little bit. Damn. I didn't know we were going Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes Metallica. Heck yeah, dude. It's pretty awesome, man. Hey, um, you were telling me the other day how much you love your boat. Like, you were like, and every bass fisherman, you have to love your boat because it becomes part of us, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'm in love with my boat. I run a Crestliner. You, like, adamantly expressed how much you love your Phoenix, dude. Like, <laughs> you were like, I, I, I love that boat so much, Pat. I can't, tell you, I can't tell you how much I love my boat. It's doing everything I needed to do. Like, I get to walk in. Well, I, mean, I, I do a few things in my boat that make it even more special. But the, the Phoenixes are... I'm, well, that's what know. my question. That's my question yeah. about what you do to make your. I mean, I, I do all the foam and the lid. I've been doing that for years. The foam and the lids, foam the pedals, foot pedals, and that. And I do all the lids and them hangers, hook liver hangers. I insulate everything. I put gaskets everywhere. So my boat's like a car. What do you mean? When you, close, when you close the door, it goes thump. Like no other boat does. Like like my boat. It's like when you close the door, it goes thump. It's like a car. It's got gaskets. So I put gaskets everywhere and foam. It, I try it, to get, I, I, maybe from, enough people foam? out there. We have enough people out there ask Phoenix to make an Amar edition. Gary Klaus might do it. Gary Klaus has been, and Teresa, Phoenix, and all the Teresa family, or like the Phoenix family, all my sponsors have been terrific, awesome. I mean, Gary Klaus has been talking to me, but their boat, the overall, I mean, it's the best boat in the market. I mean, I, like I said, I, I'm with sponsors because I, I like their product. And Phoenix, that's, that's just another sponsor. I'm with them because I like their product, but. If I honestly was gonna pick another boat, I don't, I'd have to think about it for a while because I love the Phoenix so much. And it's not just the way it's built; it's just everything—the way it rides, the way it fishes, and the way it performs, the way it pads, the way it comes off pad. It's everything about the boat is and the way it sets up for three people or four people fishing with the large inside middle por a portion that you can get out of real easy from a camera guy. Or if you're fishing three people, it's really easy to get up on top of the decks real easy. It's got steps. Everything about it, and it's quality. It's and all you were very so, adamant about it. You love it. Right, so good. Well, I, I'm fan. I make. I made it famous. I probably sold more Phoenixes west of the Mississippi than anybody because <laughs> because it's open. So you're it's not a bad it salesman won't. yourself, Aaron Martins. No, I just drive the boat like it's supposed to be driven, and, and <laughs> nobody passes you in rough in certain waters, and people just get smart after a while. What? That guy is not going by us like. 15, 20 miles an hour. Well, his head's not even moving. And I'm gone. There goes Aaron. Bye bye. That's Awful. Aaron Martins. Hey, that's what so I do to set, everybody. You set it up di differently. You set your boat up 
differently. You talked about the padding, like you do that for sound deadening. I know I got that. lithium lithium pro uh, batteries, which are awesome. They help a lot. Gotcha. Had, you know, a ton. And I got a plane plate on the back of the jack plate, PH Marine. You have a, uh, a plane plate on the back of yeah, the jacket. Yeah, it's like a flat section that goes in the back. This catches the water so it doesn't go in your plate, which is Oh, awesome. yeah, yeah, most, yeah. Most of them do that. I and got then, uh, that too, yep. These, the new Mercury's are fantastic. They're, I can't say enough about the new Merc, the four-stroke. Uh, it is amazing, but either you, if you don't know yet, run that motor real low. But the boat itself... Uh, what do you mean, run it low? The motor likes to run low, and I'm running a 20 Trim-wise? Yeah, I know. Jack plate. I got a TH Marine. Uh, oh, oh I see. Uh, electric jack plate. And it, and it, the Phoenix, I got a 921 Elite, which is a 21.6. It's a wide beam. It's in a heavy boat, 1950 around. And the Moker Emery, it's about a 77 mile an hour boat when it's loaded normal with just me in it, uh, which is really fast for a 21 and a half footer with a 250. Uh, and then it runs like at Lake Media, I passed 50 boats a day and I never got passed once. And I was only running. 72 and a half, but we're all full tanks. I'm holding 50 plus gallons of fuel. I'm running with a big, you know, wow. partner and tackle. I'm running 72 at Lake Mead. That's really good. And and I can hold that speed through chop. That's the, that's the difference in that boat. That's why I like it so much. It's the fact that I can hold speeds that even my Triton, when I was sponsored by Triton and Earl Benz for five, six, seven years. This boat does, and I've driven Bullets and Allison's. This boat does stuff that I haven't felt in other boats as far as stability and chop. And that's where the Phoenix is, that's where it shines and chop. And okay. That's, so you and like it for the big water. It's fast. It's, ha- it's fast in open water, calm water. But when you get into that chop, it's just like everybody just slides that. They just say, these go by. I'm like. So when I've been in your Phoenix, I noticed that you, you set things up um, a, a little differently. When you were on the show last time, you were telling us about how you went to all boxes for your plastics and everything. But like you, it seemed like the way you had things set up in your rod boxes were very meticulous as well. Like the way you had baits organized by like kinds. Yeah, so you know where they're at without looking. Yeah, That's like t- tell me about that a little bit, like your method there. It's really hard because MLF kind of messes it up with the cup events, but I love the cup events. I would have it no other way, but it makes it hard on a tackle because my tackle for years, the last 10 years, has been I can close my eyes and two tries grab something without looking. I mean, I have a hundred boxes on my boat. Take right. I have more boxes than anybody. I can just close my eyes and grab something and be like, is this it? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, hold on. And that would be it. I have a hundred boxes. I could just reach and know where I'm at and grab a box. So that's How? And looking. It was super fast. But now I had to consolidate more and go more to like these bigger planos. And I use a lot of the waterproof ones for my plastics. I am putting a lot of plastics in boxes now because the new plano boxes, the waterproof ones are actually waterproof. So you can actually put plastic and actually do the JJ's magic in the boxes. Because it's good, it's plastic doesn't get affected by uh, stuff like that chemical. So I'm trying to simplify stuff. So I've actually been consolidating, going from the more small boxes to just putting instead of having each bait in a separate place. So a bigger bait would have a bigger box, and I had to stow them. I had like puzzles in my boat. I'd have puzzles, but I'd get them all in there. But it doesn't work that way anymore. It's more like I stick to the bigger boxes and put five baits into one box instead of one bait. Do you? Uh, that's, a huge, that's a huge change from what I. From what I've done my whole life. Yeah. I've always separated everything. Now I'm going to more consolidating. Do you do you have so like less. for an MLF event, do you have like a work box that you're working out of then? Is that like your deal? Is just something you can just get to real quick? Uh yeah. I have everything all my extra tech was really organized. I mean, this is stuff I'm telling talking about. I don't use any of it. This is just this stuff I do right here, but uh, most ninety nine percent of my tackle I don't use. <laughs> so I keep stuff that my We're stuff like that goes that. in container my stuff that go taking containers, it's in Plano's. And then I have all my extra stuff in boxes. I have almost no bags anymore. I put almost everything in those waterproof boxes. Thank you, Plano. Even the plastics. <laughs> I remember when me, you got them. Like, yeah, they sent me like a truckload of them, and I can't thank them enough. And it, it came at a perfect time for what I was going through, and, and it's helped me tremendously because I have literally probably more Plano boxes than anybody on this planet, except the, for Plano. The day when you and got them all. I got a lot of weather gears. Like, get everything gears. out. Like, go. <laughs> right, go at, Leslie, can you I get mean, Aaron's entire wardrobe out, and we'll go through each oh item? Oh, my gosh. You want to see <laughs> it? Let's go through each item. What the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You see the containers? Those are full of Sims stuff. Almost all full. Are you kidding tackle. me? No, three of them are mega bass stuff. Gosh. There's my trophies. Holy cow, Aaron. There's my trophies. <laughs> you got that's those. That's, you that's got... like a third of them. They're, they're all over the place and under blankets. And stuff. I don't put them up. Remember when you found century belts laying around last time? Like I you, got, yeah, they're yeah, right here. You were just like hanging out in the garage and you're like, oh, <laughs> man, <over> <laughs> look at this. A oh, century, century belt. It's a I, cent- 
at that cranial bottle was sitting over there. I looked over and saw the cranial bottle sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like it. I mean, I really like the idea of Aaron's bass fishing museum. <laughs> I was working on it, so it's kind of what I've been working on my whole life. So, you know like, your yeah. buddy Bernie Schultz that was watching. He's a big lure freak too. He'll 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 he he'll get this all together. Yeah. Bernie will manage it. Like I got I got stuff that museums don't have. I got weird stuff like California and the big bait bite turned on and like yeah. handmade plugs. I got like Alan Cole original baits that he gave me when he was like younger when he just started getting popular. I got hand you know hand, it's I got cool stuff. I'm looking around and seeing that I'm surrounded by it, like stuff you guys are probably freaking. Get the AMR, AMR Super Center. <laughs> you have no idea. There's this one hanging on the rag. That's a cool one. That's a nice one. Heck yeah, dude. What what <laughs> one was that one? Uh is that old uh, Huddleston or uh, Osprey? Yeah. That's a uh, that's old man. That's got the old like the Huddleston tail, but it wasn't. I forget who that. That might be like a like a like a eighty Osprey one of. They, they have so many. I have so many like different areas of bait. I can't wait for the museum, and we yeah, need wax got, figures and everything. Boxes, yeah. the boxes are spooks, really old ones right here. I mean, I got, I, I don't I use this stuff no more. This is all like my. This is all, really history. Like I said, I only use I use this stuff, and the other rooms got way more tackle in it. This it, got way more tackle in this room. It's amazing. It's, a, tackle, it's other, absolutely other room amazing. <laughs> I don't want to show you that one. When you go in, so <laughs> the tally is one. in. Here's the tally. Are you ready for the tally? <laughs> yeah. Right now, today on today's show, Aaron Martins has spoken one million six hundred eighty-three thousand and two words. It's three. It is a new. Oh, it is three and three and three. And three. ladies and gentlemen, is a new straight cast record for uh, for a guest, Aaron. Um. I, I always tell I always tell my friend uh, Seth Fighter that he's the worst, and I always tell you that you are the best. And uh, and Aaron Martins, you are the best. But there's there's no doubt about it, man. Well, thank you. Yeah, we man. gotta do it. We gotta do this thing on tackle next time. I, I, maybe I'll open some of these boxes up and blow your. Oh, yeah. look at this one right here. Yeah, keep, you guys go. keep going. Aaron, Aaron's box. <laughs> Aaron's don't, let me, don't let me drop this on your head, honey. There's like five of them. Right here. <laughs> yeah, please be careful. We need Leslie. This is just, this is just, I have like hundreds like this. Don't come to my house. I have lots of guns. My daughter is a dead shot too. And I got booby traps. <laughs> but here's just a random box. I like you said that. A That's a tall mega bass. That's a tall Plano, big one, full of mega bass crankbait. But one day I'm going to sell it. It is, I mean, I got lots of them. They're, they're good baits. But it's, they may, I use all real stuff. And uh, I just really have no use for a lot of stuff anymore. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, you got but, the museum, bro. I have like 20 boxes like that. Do you 22? <laughs> <laughs> That's the museum. Uh, just keep but, going. Hey, how about we just close the show with Aaron just like showing baits? Like, that's way better. Why throw something inferior? Sorry, Norman. <laughs> I love you, Norman. Uh, but it is. It casts better. You're there's, right. There's it's, a 16. DD 22. 20, 20 feet on the. Look at that's, a, that's a 16. That's 20 feet on the 16 pound. That's the other a one spooner. Almost 30. Almost 30 on that other one. That's a spooner. Cool. You got stuff, Aaron. You got stuff. I know. We'll do a tackle thing. I was excited. Yeah, Sorry. let's have the let's have tackle time. That's what okay. we'll call it. Tackle. I know. Time. A lot, I know. Time. A lot of people like. Uh, we never really did tackle stuff. That's cool. I mean, there's like a lot of little things like uh, split rings. I mean, I just I've noticed a lot of stuff coming out on the internet too. I haven't looked at it much, but I, some of the magazines I've been seeing it. Double I, split rings come out of bait now. I saw that. That's something we've done for years. I a got a great split. idea. Here's what we're gonna do. Aaron, the tackle man, tackle. We're gonna call. I was up. called the tackle doctor for a while. <laughs> the tackle. You didn't. You have an article or something on that. Yeah, Tom Milgram. He named me a tackle doctor. We did that years ago. Tom Bergeron. Yeah, this tackle doctor. <laughs> hey, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna um, we're gonna call uh, Pete Glusick at the Bass University. Yeah. And then me, you, and Glusick will have a, a sit down tackle time. What do you think of that? That'd be cool. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it'd be educational. We'll learn some stuff. And I mean, pretty soon it's going to get cold here. I mean, it's going to be cold here, and it's going to be really cold where you're at. So I know, let's yeah. do something. Not We're going to have lots of time. But <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bud. Let's do something. That's yeah. that's the key right there. Um, I'm ready. Aaron Duda, I want to tell you uh, thanks again, man, for um, for being an amazing fisherman, uh, an inspiration to all uh, us humans, and um, most of all, thank you for, for being different. I uh, I I thank you for being different, man. It just happens that way. I love <laughs> you guys, and uh, and 
you know, God bless everybody out there. You know, the prayers, I, I'm sucking them in as fast as I can. But it's uh, next week's going to be a big one for me. I mean, I'm going through that stuff you always hear about next week. So we'll see what happens. Uh, okay. I, it, I'm it, confident it's, you know, it's, it's going to be good. And But it could, you know, I don't know. Just stay positive. And it's basically day at a time at this point. And extra prayers. Uh, it is, yeah. Extra it's, prayers. I got to live you know, day at a time right now and just keep positive. Yeah, man. Dude. I'm feeling dude. great. Feeling great. Hey, Everything's perfect. Hey, Leslie, can you hear me? Leslie, he's asking you. Hey, thanks, Leslie, for always being awesome. Hi, real quick. Thanks for always Her being awesome, done. Leslie. Hello, Kevin. She's so pretty, and it doesn't even matter if she doesn't wear makeup. She can... <laughs> I'm not coming in the video. <laughs> I can hear her. Hey, <laughs> Leslie's way more yeah. helpful to me than you are. You know that, right, Aaron? Yeah. She helps a lot. <laughs> hey, um... We love you guys too, and uh, and again, thanks uh, thanks for everything. And uh, I hope uh, that twenty twenty one is your best uh, year ever. Yeah, dream come true. That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah, yeah, bud. Yeah, man. Keep uh, keep that positive attitude for all of us, okay? I and, will. And uh, Aaron's rule of uh, only happy and no negative. Um, th- I'd like you to know that that's my rule. All for all yeah. for fun. It's my rule as well, and it should be everyone's rule. I'm going to wear yeah. that from now on. Please do. Please do. Because <laughs> we don't got to worry about shit as long as everyone lives by Aaron's rules. The world <laughs> will be amazing. Okay? Yeah. Aaron right. Martins, thank you very much. Thank Fast you, Galaxy, give it up for the one and only Aaron well, Martins. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, everybody out there. And, uh, yeah, peace. Love you guys. And God bless. And... Sorry, screw COVID. Sorry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sorry, F COVID, yeah. F cancer. COVID can kiss my ass. I swore. Sorry. It's okay. It's right. acceptable it's okay. sometimes. I get it. Aaron Martin's right there. Give it up again. Aaron Martin. Yeah. F COVID, F cancer. Hell yeah. Peace, bud. See you, Leslie. See you, Aaron.